We are recording, I believe. Awesome. So, we're back with the main campaign again, which is awesome. Deathcap has returned, Yay. thank gosh. <laughs> Yay, Deathcap's back. Um, so I'm recording this session to see if the audio works, because I'm actually recording with computer audio on and I have music running. So when you play this back, it should be a bit more of an immersive experience since I am playing music in the background. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to be doing the recap today because it's been a month and I think that the DM probably has the best idea of what's going on, except for Alex, who literally watched the last two sessions back right before the session. So, I mean, I guess we could have like a rock, paper, scissors game and see who wins and who has to do the recap, but I think I'll do it today. If that's okay I mean, with I, you. I, will also, I also remember, but yeah, sure. Okay. Do you want to just roll for recap? Roll for recap. Okay. Oh, okay, Kari, you can, anyone who doesn't want to do the recap does not have to do the recap. Oh god, it might be Tidy Whack. E. It is looking like Tidy Whack. Oh yeah, Tidy Whack. What happened like a month ago? in the Dawn Seekers, what were we doing before this session? All right, last session, we had just defeated the, we, or we had rather just fended off this jester dude, oh, yeah. uh, who apparently has some importance to Alex's backstory. Uh, and then we managed to, we ba just barely managed to get out of uh, King's Gate. However, there was an unfortunate loss. And Ramzik was beheaded by... Ursicon Knight Leader. Leader that of the Kanamuin. That guy, yeah. And so, the party has taken, has, has taken a ride with Paddywhack, a kobold artificer who seems to be aligned with the Sigil Alliance. Perhaps, maybe, who knows. And they are currently using it as a taxi service. Yep. And now they're making their way into a town of... Ruskin. Truskin. Yep. Ruskin. Tiny and, and after finding out that the near immediate area, it, all water basically becomes poison, uh, yeah, so they've kind of united in the force of these people are suffering. We know what they're suffering, what causing their suffering. Unfortunately, it's all the way over fucking here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, hang on. Let me just... I forgot to bring that back, the highlight of the seminary. All right, so... Yep, it's all the way over here. So they have quite a journey to go on, which means they will need her, sir. They will need Paddywhack services for quite a bit longer. So yes, the party has just fled King's Gate after the shocking return of Vex Mortem, the law that basically bans all mercenaries and adventurers and reenacts the force known as the Kenamween, adventuring adventurer slayers that are ruled by the government, like the high government of Prismon. And you guys were all like questioning, hey, are they, is this happening everywhere? If so, how? Is it just in Kingsgate? How long is this going to take for everyone else to enact the <clears throat> law? And so that's something that's been left a little bit um, undis like, undisclosed by me because no one would know that. And you guys are probably going to find out as this moves on. But as is, you've just met up with this simple townsfolk who has townsman who has been traveling all the way to the borders of Mount of the Ebony Wastes, even to get water for his family and then returned it to Ruskin after a long journey since none of the wells have been functioning since the water has turned to poison from a curse. And the reason this curse, you guys have to go all the way up to the seminary is because of the Clockwork Coven who enacted this curse and the only way to get rid of it is by killing them. So we're currently on the borders of Taruskin looking down into the small town. Instantly, I'm gonna pull us over. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so... okay. As you see, Taruskin, 
the small village surrounded by many, many fields of grain and plant life. It is a secluded little area, and especially when taking into account the upper section of the town that you can see on a hillside is walled off by like 15 foot tall stone barricades. And it seems as though everyone out that's living on the outside are mostly like poorer farm folk and you can't really see inside the upper part of the town. However, you can glean from where you are here that there is a, some seemingly one entrance that being a massive gatehouse that has a drawbridge that flips over a large moat that's been dug out and filled with water surrounding the upper village. You guys are currently standing on like a little rise looking down into the valley which um, holds this small village. And what would you like to do? Where, where are we? Actually, if you look over to the right side, you'll see a, a death cap icon really that everyone party. should be able to control that says the party. Okay, cool. You also see out to your left side here is a large pond, and at the very center of it is a small islet that has that is just surrounded by jagged stones, and upon it seems to be a few little red capped buildings. So, welcome back, everybody. Welcome yeah, welcome back. You. By the way, you're a little quiet. I'm, I'm just yeah, wondering, like, where are we going? I'm still like, I think we were in kind of a weird spot when we left last time. And I'm still like wondering, like, what. I mean, we had that. Um, Paddywhack mentioned we had the jester we fended off. Where are we in terms of, like, what we're trying to actually do? I'm wondering about this mission of getting rid of this person water and everything. Does it feel like something we want to do? I think that's what we decided we wanted to investigate. We So we decided to go further into the town, uh, question some more about what... Because uh, they've been living with this, if I recall, for the last hundred years. Correct. Yeah. That's my uh, question. Like, if it's been a hundred years, and this isn't going to change... Do we have more pressing business to worry about than this? The moment not really well actually you do have some business that you have to take care of that mostly being uh finding philibus cornucopia who could potentially help you escape western talbaris entirely if you headed to the bridges of syntax as he has offered you at some point or mentioned in passing the fact that he has an airship that he's constructed which would be which would be a way out of western talbaris to potentially find more things to get yourself stronger and come back and defeat the Jester later, or something different like that. And as you're just kind of sitting here up on this hill, see a small yeah. girl running up towards you, and then she just stares at you. She just freezes in place, staring at you. Turns, looks over her shoulder. Hello, little girl. <laughs> Hello. What are you doing here? You look like new folk. You look bloody silly, if I must say so. Um, what's that in your back there? He points at your. You have a staff, correct? Or yeah. Staff. Yeah, yeah. Staff for you know, old man or something. Can't walk. It's an old man walking stick. And you, you look mighty fancy. I don't think you're gonna like this town very much. Might want to keep heading east or west, I mean. Got a bigger town there called Ravisac. Me mum's from there. He points to Alex, by the way. This is to Alex. Oh. Uh. Thank you. Yeah, it wasn't a compliment, but I guess you're welcome. You folk look pretty useful, honestly. You got your swords, you look pretty crazy. I think some of us village folk could use your help. What's with what? See, um, you best be making your way to the tavern. I haven't been able to see it. My mum said it's too grody for me to watch, so I haven't been able to look. But go there, there should be something to help you. I'm not sure. People are acting mighty feared at the moment. Hmm. And who knows? 
Maybe we can turn the tides of the grain wars. And people could settle down and be nice to each other for a change. <coughs> grain wars? Oh, yes. Don't know. We're not from these parts. We don't know. I can tell. There's <coughs> all these families getting together in a big fight, trying to see who's the biggest and the best. Whoever's got the most farms and grains and that kind of thing. It's really boring, honestly. I couldn't care less about it, but maybe you will. All grown up seem to be the same here. Bored as hell. What? Does your mom know you're here? No. And it's going to stay that, right? You don't know my mom. No. But, um, you've been wandering out this far. Not sure. Parents... You might have to pick berries. My friend Lucan, but he's. he's got lost. I guess mosey on your way, little one. Alright. He just gets up and leaves. Deathcap, what are you doing right now? I'm gonna like stretch and wake up from my nap and kinda like taking a huge yawn. Seeing the little girl and it's like look at Alex. I had the strangest dream. I was with a dragon. And a were forged, and there was a hag. Uh, what's up? What did I miss? Hmm. Oh. Alex, how do you respond to that? Uh. I just stare at him. Kind of just. I'm sitting on a rock and thinking. Hello. Hmm. Uh, well, oh. I, well, I, I was speaking, but apparently my microphone has been acting weird. Oh, I got you. Ah. That makes sense. Oh, so yeah. what were you saying? Uh, no, I was just saying, like, well, there was this little girl. I couldn't understand a single word of what she was saying. Something about a grain wars and something happening at the tavern. Here in Tavern, do they have ice water? Can we get ice water? Can we oh, go? I highly ice doubt water. that. <laughs> that's kind of, I highly doubt that. That's kind of a thing that's only designated for the Amber Dragon, and even then, like finding it out that either the Amber Dragon would be kind of a big rarity. Like massive. My ears are gonna droop. Well, I mean, regular alcohol isn't that bad. Alcohol. I just wanted ice water. No, no, it's uh, uh it's <laughs> looks at Karu. You know him. Explain it. I have to drive the cart. Deathcap. This is. <laughs> this. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna shake my head. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake my head. <laughs> I, I, I shake my head. I have to say, I, I lean into her death cap and I say, do you have a funny feeling about this? We're moving what? toward, apparently, evidently somewhere, we're, moving, we're walking along toward the, the village. I'm a, riding in the cart, and as you're moving past these <laughs> grain fields, you can see people just dotting the landscape from all the way up to the horizon. just raising their heads, these farming folk with their straw hats that just, just turn and look at you yeah. as you pass. I, uh, I'm, I'm driving the cart. Driving the cart. Maybe looking, yep, just driving the cart. That's why I'm moving it. I'm driving the cart. Hmm. And we were being chased by something. Remember, we stopped it. What the heck happened there? Can someone remind me what was going on there? Oh, yeah. You guys shook off a band of the guards from Kingsgate a while back. And those guards were under whose who's, uh, charge? Was it, was it the... Prince Evans? Everard, the new ruler of Kingsgate after the death of King Tormir VI. Uh, Duke Prince Everard was mind-controlled by the jester who commanded him to enact uh, Vex Mortem. As you, go, as you go past that house, could you uh, like freeze the mini real quick? Mm, yeah. You know, it might be useful for us to go into this town in order to find out if Vex Mortem has reached this area. 
Plus, staying in this village might be a good, good, might provide us with some cover. Because in the major cities and the bigger cities, maybe, just maybe, we would have our, we would be in trouble. We might be being hunted. Mm. This might be a place for cover. What do you all think of that? I'm gonna look, uh, Patty Mac, do you have like closed the, the cell in this wagon? Uh, no. What is what we had? What so this is like a smaller card, like I think Fenris has said. Like That's it's right. basically like it's currently holding four things giant ass robot and you three. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to like hide my goblin ears because I'm, I'm thinking like no matter what, Sirisagon is gonna like come looking for me, but me being a goblin in a small town, I don't know how they're gonna react. Hmm. <laughs> As you ride back past this house here, this massive farmhouse, it's a very de- like decadent looking place. Multiple houses, not multiple houses, I mean multiple stories, all with a facade that's been like stained by years of wear and tear and rain that's just dripping down the kind of bird poop colored walls. And as you move past it, you can see through the like wave glass windows, Couple you mean of small. Decrepit? Decadent or decrepit? Decadent and decrepit. Not really decrepit. It's like a stylishly old look. And the walls are like oh, smattered see. with, uh, from the top down, you know, it's dragged out this sort of watery aesthetic. And looking out from the windows, you can see several bearded dwarves with bald heads that all just shrug as you go past. And you can see hanging above. This door here, since there are two doors, um, is a sign reading Stonefin Winery. Stonefin Winery and Farmhouse. And then you just hmm. keep moving forwards. Hmm. That looks like a beautiful home. It's a winery. Which is a type of alcohol. Sort of I'll- like the ice water. <laughs> My ears are going to perk up. Can we go? Can we go? Can we go? Can we go? Uh, it's, it's more a place to buy the wine. And wine is kind of an expensive thing. Very expensive. Never mind. Like, most people won't have wine. Not that he's going to understand that. I mean, we're talking about money with Death Cap. That's not going to go very well. You have to... Wait, does he not know... He just like full on stops the cart. Hold on, wait. Does he not know about commerce? Not. You'll have to teach him. I mean, I have it. No, it makes things go away. I pull out a pipe and start to light the pipe and smoke it. <laughs> you just the the sight of pipe smoke begins to waft up into the air, and as it goes like into the air, Car, you're just sitting back in the cart, like legs crossed, just puffing on your pipe. You look up into the sky casually, and you see your pipe smoke change. It goes from a dark bluish gray to red, and being swirling above you, and then it changes into what looks like a star, like a starry sky, and then into a crescent moon before popping. And yeah, did see- I mean to do that? Huh? <laughs> did I mean to do that, or is that something... It seems to be a uh, phenomenon. Uh, and yeah, as... I, I hold the pipe and I'm looking up at this with my kind of this is this has got my attention. <laughs> so while you're looking at your pipe like this has got your attention, I'm gonna go. You're not only magic, but you can put big big Uh you you're right there. Tough. I couldn't hear you. I'm I'm gonna go. You're not only magic, but you can speak to the elements too? What the fuck was that? I look at I look I look at Deathcap and like Deathcap, do you know what that was? Um uh, can can I do a check? Yeah, Maybe sure. I... <laughs> Make an arcana <laughs> check. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Fourteen? It was probably oh, just that's... a simple minor illusion or um uh, Thaumaturgy, a very simple cantrip. I see. It must be a magical pipe. 
I wouldn't go that I far. And I continued to sing. Wait, hold on. Did anyone, did anyone else hear that? Hold on. Hi, yeah, I'm here. See, leaning against the si the fence here is a what looks like a very disheveled wizard with stubble on his chin and a low-brimmed straw hat. He's, he's got like this down gray colored cloak that is adorned with feathers around the neck like a mantle and just tucked subtly into his belt as a wand. And he's puffing the same pipe as you are. Oh, I know him. Uh, cool. Um, actually, make a history check. So many things are hitting are hitting Paddywhack all at once. <laughs> Death okay, doesn't want to do money. Holy shit! Death has a random guy. Oh my god! What the welcome, hell? Welcome, welcome to Death. Welcome baby. to the Dawn Seekers, everybody. We roll nat twenties and nothing welcome else. Welcome to the Dawn Seekers. Nat twenties for the stupidest stuff. First yeah. roll of the day, Matt twenty. You remember a wizard by the name of Terahen Aspidos that once came, who actually used to be from the uh, the Arcane Octad itself, who abandoned his station and his path and came to live in uh, Taruskin as the local wizard, a minor lord and merchant who actually hails from the High Kingdom of Vicor out of Western Talvaris. You don't exactly know what he's doing here, but you remember that he fled his post and now and now just is, he just sits back and relaxes in Taruskin at this point in time. And it's been very difficult for any of the wizards to reach him because of the dividing border of the Redont that separates Western Telvaris from the rest of Prismon. As for this old man. <laughs> oh, jump off the back of the <laughs> it has been so long. We Did have you know an old friend. This is Karu Sarvi, one of my oldest uh, distant pupils. How is old Valtro doing? I haven't seen him in a long time. It's been Valtro years. Come here, old friend. He goes forward to give you a bear hug. I hug him back. The Who is this dude. merry group of charmers you've got with you? Well, these are my unlikely band of friends. friends? Better friends you couldn't, you couldn't find. A wizard with friends, imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> no, it's good to oh. see you. And who are well, the would you mind introducing me to these fine gentlemen? Indeed. Well, this is Alex Vaisan, Death Cat, and our new friend Paddywhack. Pleasure to meet you all, Terran Aspidos. I would all I would proffer a hand to shake. However, there are too many of you and only one of me. So I hope that an introduction will suffice. I didn't think I'd see you in a long time, Karu. You've been growing. Look at that beard on your chin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's something of a minor issue compared to the things that we've seen of late. I really, really am extremely happy to see you because maybe you can up, maybe you can update us on what's going on in these parts. I right now, this is bad, bad news. I don't wish to sort of rush into the dire, but Rex Morden has been reinstated, Ooh, and I wanted to ask whether or not you know of this here in the town. My dear, I'm just a simple page. I purify the waters, and that's why I was uh, coming up to see the newcomers. I was coming to see if you would help. Since it's been rather hard to make uh, any sort of money in this town ever since the water's gone. I'll explain that to you later. But, well, Rex Morden, that's an ancient law, right. isn't it? Indeed. Oh, yeah, bad stuff, very bad stuff. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that was a Vizalier law, wasn't it? Vizalier, indeed. Indeed it was. Bad times. Well,. So we're traveling with a goblin. I wonder if you could stay here. Could we, could we maybe lay low in this area? If we agree to help you with this problem, you think we could probably manage to, I don't know, keep a low profile around the area? With no doubt, of course. Take you under my wing any other week, my friend. However, I would like my, uh, my ability to make money back again, as brands are short these days. 
And you know that oh. most likely better than anyone being in Western Telvaris. <laughs> is this water? Or does, this affect the, does this affect the crops? <laughs> Surprisingly, no. It seems that only drinking water is affected by it. Which is unfortunate. Ah, uh, yeah. This is a curse, right. Oh, yes, a curse. It's very specific, but very annoying. It also affects anyone trying to cook or bake with it, which is an issue since I take my pride in purifying water. I consider myself a bit of a monopoly holder over clean water, but this bloody curse, my purification spells aren't doing jack shit. <clears throat> bit of a bother. I haven't been able to leave since my bad leg, you know. Just gestures to his right knee, and only now you realize when he was walking over towards you, he was, like, limping and hobbling. Huh. He's pretty bad. Oh, oh. I can give you a ride. I imagine this room. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm fine. It's just Besides, long distances there's, 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 that bother There isn't me. any room. There isn't any room? Really? Yes. Well, uh, my yes. apologies. What I think one more one way to do Yeah, just there's no room. Yeah. I understand. I understand. And he starts hobbling over to the card. Just give yeah. me a few moments. And with a snap of his fingers and a flick of a wrist, his wand shoots out of his pocket into his left hand, and he flicks it once and twice, and suddenly he shrinks to the size of Death Cap. Simple spell, really. Oh, wow, I kind of assumed your voice to be kind of tangier. Okay. You would think, but that's not how magic works. Uh, could, could someone give that's me a weird. hand? I hadn't really thought about this beforehand. You, there. Oh. Your name, I'm trying to remember. Hang on, Nokaru, I know you too well already. What's yours again? I remember that it started with an A, and your last name started with a V. Come on, give me a hand here. Uh, <laughs> right. Yes, uh, sorry. I pick him up and put him into the cart. I, I meant your name, but thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. And now there's officially no more room in the cart. <laughs> Sorry, car, I expect you'll have to walk. <laughs> I mean, I can walk alongside. This is so well, I mean, I, mean, I meant alongside Carhu. Oh, okay. Well, uh, it's fine. Because okay. um, I'm assuming like this has space enough for like four medium creatures. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah that'd be about. Yeah, it's about, it's about three medium and two small. Currently. Hmm? <laughs> well, now, get on with it, let's go. Where are you off to? You don't mind me asking. Well, into town, buy some rations, maybe do a little bit of investigation, but after this, well, we heard that this was caused by something called, what was it again? Clockwork Coven? Clockwork Coven, yeah. Clockwork. So, you know, we need to go to deal with those. It's clockwork. A specific oh, well, escapes these rural parts of the world. Oh, well, a clock is actually a time measuring device made with gears and no various other things. Really? I've never heard yeah. of such a thing. You'll have to enlighten me. Well, I helped make one once. It basically helps keep the time. Though, though about once or twice a year, about twice a year, they have to be reset about an hour behind or ahead. I don't know why. Something about what was it called again? Uh, oh, they, they, daytime they, savings, or whatever. <laughs> takes out a little notebook and pen, and well, not like a, like a feather quill. And then, as he licks his, and he, as he like licks the tip of the pen, you see ink just magically appears on it, and he just starts writing all this down. <laughs> it's just Patty Max explaining how a clock works. <laughs> I'm just gonna look at Alex confused and it's like, wait, I have to write down stuff she talks about too? <laughs> <laughs> As you're passing by this second house here, you see that it has a, a similar sign hanging over it, except it reads uh, House Heron Mill of the Open Field. <laughs> She's just explaining how a clock works to this old wizard. Yep. Oh, God, this is why I love playing. I, I'm already loving playing this character. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, it's a clock. 
Uh, as you're passing by this building here, you notice that it has a very a boisterous looking sign over it. And as you're entering towards the middle of town here, the most of the buildings are very simple uh, thatch roofed cottages or small village homes. And they're all built upon this large hill that comes to an apex where this walled section is. Hmm. And down here is a building that looks very boisterous and very, very, like, it's more, it's, it's got more building? flair than everything else. Huh? What does it say on the sign? It says, the bit and bridle. Ah, I see. Bridle. Hmm. It sounds like a place for horse supplies. Hmm, might be good. And then you also hear the sound of, like, the door is actually swinging wide open, and you can hear people from the inside, like, they sound shocked and surprised, and also in a little bit of terror. Like, they're all murmuring. Oh, the tavern. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that little girl told, did tell us about that. The girl? Uh, yeah. We passed her while we were coming in from the east? What? Yes. Yes. What did she look like? What did, what did she look like? Uh, fuck, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm, right, I'm gonna... Alex, what did she like, look like? I don't remember. No, uh, what did she look like? <laughs> you make it up. <laughs> no, oh. Did you... Oh, okay. Uh, I think she had... She looked oh. like a rancor. No, 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 <laughs> no. She had brown hair? Brown hair? Yeah. Saw you yeah. playing Jedi oh, yeah, Survivor, like, ten round face, like, sort of buggy little eyes. <clears throat> Anya explains everything. She loves exploring up with a friend who can... Kids are adorable, aren't they? The fact that they think they can make a difference in the world. <laughs> so funny. Anyways. Yes, no, the big bridal. That would be the tavern. Ah... Uh... Yeah, she, yeah, this Anya, yeah, she said that something was happening here. She said her mom told her not to go in there. This may need investigation. I agree. Not really none of my business, but hmm. No one else is going to do it. They're not pawning themselves off their ass to do anything about it. So I suppose it's, it's uh, unnecessary. <laughs> She's just like, hmm. What is my moral obligation here? It's just like he just stops the car and just like ponders this for a minute. So you're con apparently you're confused. Karu, would you help out an yes. old friend? Of oh, course. No, these people are bogging everything down with all their, their wit and worry about, well, the murders that are going on and all that sort of thing. All right, so I jump off, I sort of jump my way off to this, you know, swing off to the side of the cart, step down, straighten out my garb and then walk toward the people. Sitting at the crossroads, the facade of this two-story tavern is stained after apparently decades of existence, built almost like a church with a bell tower shape at its forefront, it's protruding from the main building, and two stables, actually one stable, off to the right side. As you head up towards it, you open the... The door is actually wide open. You head into a small vestibule that, as you look up, you see that it, it probably was a bell tower at some point, except the bell's been cut down, and it's now just home to emptiness and sunlight and pigeon droppings. You can see several are ha just sitting up in the rafters looking down at you. And you step uh, three steps down into a very low-ceilinged room. After the bell tower vestibule, the tavern drops down four steps into a dimly lit room, the windows fairly close to the ceiling and relatively small. Candles fasten the simple wooden pillars, keeping the low ceiling up, flicker and illuminate the better parts of the tavern. And at the very center of the common room is a stand where a bard performs. A bar sits at the back of the room, behind which are layers of stands and trophies, most silvered swords and axes. And as you enter this room, the first thing that catches your eye is a single massive hulking figure, at least seven feet tall, probably, or actually probably like 6'11", something around those areas, is just sitting at the bar, completely calm, not saying anything, hunched over a mug of mead. Hanging on the figure's back is an enormous ax that is stained with, it's like absolutely stained with layers and layers of blood. Some of it's been dried, most of it has 
just it's just slick and wet and the reason is very apparent as you look around to the center of the room which is just covered in six corpses these corpses have been slashed through the chest some of their heads have been cut off and they've just freshly killed bodies blood splattered all over the tables the chairs the floor and as you enter this room the figure in the at the bar just sips from the the tankard calmly that uh what do you do oh by the way there are also some carrots like farm hands and stable hands just standing around just common folk all gathered around the bodies and none of them going near this figure sitting at the counter even the barkeep who is a i believe a silver haired man a, a slender half elven man with high cheekbones and golden hair who is just like he's standing at the very far back his back pressed up against his sword collection hanging on the wall and just not saying anything his forehead slick with sweat well, what, more people what do we have here the common folk turned to look at you they're all completely pale and the figure just does not say anything and keeps sipping from the tanker I step over the bodies up to the bar, about, say, eight feet away from the hulking figure, put my elbow on the bar, and I order a glass of meat. The bartender is shaking from head to toe. He's just, like, jittery, and he, and he hears you order this. And he starts tentatively moving towards the bar and goes to get you a glass of meat. And one of the, the common folks like, You're just gonna let him do that! There's a body right here, Matt! Multiple bodies! This is a serious time, no one for drinks! You obviously don't that. cover my right here, do you? Is he yelling that? Yeah, one of them is like, is yelling that at Karu and steps forward. That's my son there, Matt! That's my son! You should be paying respects! And you? No. You like should you. not have killed my boy. You'll fear my vent, my wrath after I'm done with you. I think a little bit of explanation is in order. What exactly happened here? All right, I'm going to get back to you in two seconds. What is everyone else doing? Here? I'm going to grab that guy and pull him back. All right, Alex, what are you doing? You're grabbing the guy and pulling him back? Yeah, the one screaming, oh, saying, that's my there? son there. They're all there? I thought that we were all still... Sorry. No, that's fine. If you got, do you want to be here or not? Uh, I guess Patty I kind of wasn't really paying attention, being like, what's my moral obligation here? And you know, hearing that, like, oh, there's my moral obligation. Found it. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah. go, then proceeds to go in, sees everything. Everything you see. Um, <laughs> just <Yeah>. like, <laughs> just in the, like at the front, just seeing this. Yikes. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. pulling a mushroom right in Alex. <laughs> so you're on <laughs> Alex's shoulders right now? Yep. Mushroom Yoda, yep. Alright, Mushroom Yoda is on Alex's shoulders. Alex, you just grab this guy. Yeah, I pull him away to keep him from getting himself killed. Uh, okay, <laughs> so you pull him away. He's trying to resist, but he doesn't seem to have enough strength in him. As you can see, he's, his cheeks are tear-streaked, his eyes are bloodshot, and... He is a very, he looks like a farm, like a farmer kind of man. He's wearing a, a leather skull cap. He's got simple peasant's clothes on. And as this is happening, Carl, you're, you're kind of like glancing from, you. are you sipping? What are you doing actually? How badass do you look? Do, like? do I have, do I have the, do I have the, the, the uh, do I have the, um, you know, the do meat? I have the, the mead yet? So the bartender filled it so full that when his shaking hand handed it to you, it was sloshing around and spilling along either side of the tankard. And so okay. as he gives it to you, it's just overflowing. But yes, you do have your meat. So I, I shake my hand off after, you know, to get all this stuff off it. I pick it up. I sip the um, mead. And then I cast burning hands on the pulking figure. Oh! <laughs> Oh my okay. god, okay. Um, I'm That's gonna happening. invite our new player to the game. 
as you attack him with burning hands. <laughs> what? I was not expecting that. <laughs> Either actually wasn't expecting either of those. Me neither. <laughs> Holy shit. I attack. By the way, you attack new player. <laughs> oh my god. Is this murder? <laughs> no. No, this is Okay. Not. Oh. Alright. Okay. Can you please uh join the role playing? <laughs> oh. Oh no, this is a very unfortunate introduction. <laughs> Especially if it was about to happen. Okay. Uh, Alright. Zaroth, you have you were sitting in the tavern, bodies lying behind you that you just eviscerated as they were trying to bully you for a reason I'm not gonna disclose to a whole, whole party. As some people came into the tavern, a group, and one of the, like, there was a group of people around these bodies, not getting anywhere close to you, all terrified, and then after a certain turn of events, a slender-looking, like, middle-aged human man wearing a staff on his back and having, like, a, a small... What does your beard look like, Carr? Like the picture. Like the picture, so it's like a, a small, close-cropped goatee, and... A uh, very receding mustache, and as he headed up and ordered a mead, you were just sitting there calmly sipping your drink. When he set the drink down, turned, banned his wait fingers. Yeah, I, I began to study. I began to. Um, I began to cast burning hands at him because I'm not getting an explanation of what the hell is going on here. Now, may I ask if people can just. Somebody wants to interrupt me and in casting this spell. Would you allow that? Because right now, I'm just not getting an explanation, and I'm not waiting for this guy to turn around and start slaughtering me. I mean, so Hattie's, not, Hattie's too far away to do anything, but I mean, if you do cast burning hands, yeah, she's calling in backup. Zaroff, what do you do as he comes up to the bar? So they're coming. So he's coming up to the bar, like casting a spell towards me. He's he sat drinking. down at the bar. And ha ordered a mead right next to you. We're gonna go oh, back like two minutes. seconds okay. to when you ordered your mead. Car. Okay, I'm. Me. I'm just gonna glance over and look at uh, who ordered it and nod, and then look back straight, waiting for mine. You have yours in your hand. You've been drinking it. Oh yeah, then I'm just gonna chug it. <laughs> chug it all the way down. You just. Yeah, the just whole pound thing. The drink. All the way down. Yep. Typical <laughs> Goliath fashion. Yep, that's exactly what I do. All right, oh. awesome. I want an explanation of what's going on. Did you hear? He heard that. You, he heard that. Well, hang on. So. Yeah. I said I want an explanation of what's going on. Here, okay. What happened? All I got yeah, was some there was the guy claiming vengeance for the death of his son. Yes, and then you know, Alex was holding him back so that he didn't get himself killed. Karu asked for an explanation. What happened here? No one has said anything, and so burning hands on it. Burning hands Alpha's on it. Alpha's swinging the burning hands on. I'm not sitting here waiting for somebody to just like whip out and start kung fu in my butt. I'm not going to do that. So, <laughs> meanwhile, Patty works all the way back at the entrance of the tavern, watching this happen. All right. So he just asked. You see this human man who is asking for an explanation. All right, so do? after I, after I down the ale, I turn, look at him, and respond with, uh, <laughs> and I, I respond with, they were picking on me. I hate bullies. Oh, that's so, so. cold. <laughs> Indeed. Understandably, but a bloodbath is a bit excessive, isn't it? Depends on the type of bullying, I presume. When things turn physical, sometimes blood baths are necessary. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm still getting ready to cast burning hands at this guy. I have no idea what his deal is. You're not in danger. You haven't wronged me. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna drop off of Alex and like go between Tyru and and this new guy. And it's like, wait. For, for, for somebody who, who understands how it is being the outcast, um, 
maybe we're just looking at it wrong. Hey, he did kind of murder a couple of people. Like, like he, that, he just kind of walks over. He did kind of murder a couple of people. That's a bit extreme. When, when, when you look a certain way, people tend to treat you a certain way. And I'm, I'm going to look at him and it's like, what, was that the case? I'm going to glance down at the go- You're a goblin, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a kobold. Okay, <laughs> okay. so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to glance down at both of them and respond with, I'm sure you both have gone through something similar. You're both smaller creatures. I'm, I assume you've been rejected or talked down on, be- not like, talked down on because you are smaller than everyone else. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I, I am a Goliath, but I am not typical. I'm not a typical Goliath. I am a short Goliath. I'm standing. <laughs> I, I'm standing at six foot eleven, but I'm a short Goliath. I see. <laughs> Wait, hold on. That. <laughs> what? Somebody call you short. <laughs> because I think the average height of a Goliath is like seven five or something. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah so after he said, I'm I'm just gonna look at Alex. Like, okay, you know, you you you're not treated differently. But if they were to know you, think about it this way: a bunch of outsiders who I've never met are coming at me picking on me and shoving me around because I'm shorter. Now, um, imagine you. Uh, Alex is a human, correct? Alex is uh, yes, he appears to be a human. So I'm going to look at Alex and go, imagine you, human, going up to my going up to my former tribe. You're shorter than them. You're not a Goliath. So, with them responding with shoves, attacks for you being shorter and probably eating you, how would you reply? Bloodbath, or would you talk it out in air quotes? Hmm. I'm still uh, not convinced that laying waste to villagers in a tavern and then stopping for a drink afterwards is, indicates, let's say, stability. No one said I was stable. <laughs> I buy you a drink? I love this. I love this so much. <laughs> Would you like another drink? Might as well. <laughs> Bring this man another ale, barkeep. He's growing on me. Okay. <laughs> oh boy, if I keep picking up people, I'm gonna need a bigger cart. Well. Let's put it this way. We have had some recent unfortunate circumstances where our muscle, I put in air quotes since air quotes are so lovely, (laughs) was taken down by one of our mortal enemies. We have an opening. Would you be interested? The pay isn't great. The treatment is probably about as good as what you just got here, but if you respond in like ways, we can make that useful. Well, we see how I handled the treatment I just received. Been like this for the past... One second, let me check something. It's been like this for the past 17 years of my life. So, I'm used to bad treatment, and I'm used to handling bad people. So, I, as long as following, following along with y'all can make me stronger and more powerful to one day achieve a goal, as we'll put it, I'm interested. Well, well, while Death Cap is going to grab like a small cup of ale and pour it on the side while he mentions that we lost our muscle. And I'm just going to go, I saw humans say, this is for my lost homies. (laughs) (laughs) Zara's just going to glance at the goblin and go, I believe I've heard that too. And just chug mine. The barkeep does not know what to think of this <laughs> at all. <laughs> One thing I have to say that if we, I think if we decide to align ourselves with you, we're wearing out our welcome rather quickly. Where the devil is Terradin in this, on all of this? 
Where the hell is Aspidus? Where is Aspidus? Oh, uh, Terahen. He's, st- he's actually not entered the tavern. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, well, he couldn't you know, leave the cart. He wasn't tall well. enough. I mean, I don't leave the uh, cart easily enough. <laughs> I, I, on Alex's That was his back. excuse. <laughs> I expect that we probably, if we hang around someone who's murdered the population here, we're probably not going to be welcome in this town. That my friend Terahan has taken me in, you know, sent us in here to sort of reestablish order. Hmm. I'm just gonna raise a hand and go. Now wait. Think. Yes, I'm. I j- may have just slaughtered part of the population of this town. But what is going to make them kick me out of this town? Probably the murder. I've been here for a minute now, and I have. Slaughtered a few, uh, slaughtered a few groups of four or five. <laughs> a few groups. Oh this isn't the first. This is not the first time this has happened to me, and I'm yet to be kicked out. I think, even though I'm smaller than a Goliath, typical Goliath, I'm still quite larger than most humans and most villagers. So I don't think they're going to come up to a. Uh, they're going to come up to me, stand me, who is standing six foot eleven and weighing. 275 pounds, carrying a great axe on my back, and tell me to leave. What the fuck is this So here? I'm sure, I'm sure we'll all still be welcome in this town. We actually really need the, the defense. I don't know, have you ever heard of Vex Mortem? I have not. Well, time for a Karu history lesson. <laughs> history with Karu, baby! History. Let's go. Yeah. Now he's getting his first you know, boring Karu history lesson. And I'm going to tell him about the entire story of Vex Mortem and the fact that people who walk around acting like he's acting are asking for trouble with the authorities and that we have to somehow look out for one another as adventurers, which is the reason why we're, you know, interested in getting together here because you know, he needs to know that that's happening. And, as um, you're saying, people are going to start getting. This is not going to be received well. No one's going to like this. <laughs> the door swings open. Oh, crap. And several figures clad in studded armor, wielding crossbows that spark with magical energy, and lashing whips at their side, step into the building. They have, like, very prominent brooches on their, like, nearby their pauldrons on their shoulders and that brooch does not really seem familiar to any of you, any of you. however with this appearance and like at their on their back it's actually slung each of them have like this net that crackles with magical electricity and they all wear tricorn hats Goya, yeah here we go <laughs> told you grunt found him adventurance here oh crap ah oh, crap baskets did he say you him alive? No, he just said he wanted him. Cold or otherwise. What do you guys do? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, she's gonna, uh, yeah. Playwright's gonna book it backwards like, crap, 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 crap. Company, yeah, yeah, company, yeah. and then dive under a table and get out her light crossbow. <laughs> Are you, do you I guys want to, sorry, go ahead. I throw the remaining ale up into the air and cast burning hands into it. <laughs> okay! Power move, alright. We're rolling initiative now. Oh, oh yeah! Hang on. I, I, Sorry, go ahead. Do they have helmets or anything like that? They have tricorn oh, hats on one. with the same pull, with the same, like, uh, brooch on that you'd seen earlier. Are their pauldrons metal? Uh, no, their pauldrons are made out of, like, a stout... It looks almost like wood, but it's clearly tied hard leather. Did you click on your tokens? Oh, no, I didn't yet. Let me go All right, let's that. try it. Well, you both got shitty initiative, so that's fine. <laughs> All right. So but then I, just, I just initiated the movement, though, without the roll. Yeah, I mean, so you can, sir, can... you can go ahead. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, Paddywhack is sitting here, but all this entire group over here on the side, this group um, that you can, this entire group here, 
I'm just gonna spray them with fire. You're f wait, you're wait, 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 what? Why are you attacking them? Are they the people? We're the bad guys. Okay, no, 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 the bad guys are at the walking. entrance. They're right here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, they I, I just bursted them. in. They just bursted These in. These are uh, the people worrying about him being oh, here. Yeah, give me right. like <laughs> three no, seconds because no, I, I just rolled this as a random encounter. So. Where are these guys? Anyway, um. So yeah, these are all civilians. <laughs> all right, they're all civilians, my dude. That's why I scampered away and hid under the table, and I took out my light crossbow. I'm just like, fucking nope, fuck this shit. <laughs> How do you erase these crazy drawings? <laughs> you gotta click on it, and then you can erase it like that. Oh, can I click on it? I see. Just select. Okay. You delete that. All right, great. But yeah, you don't want to want to look at. Actually, am I even close enough to hit those guys? Um, <laughs> let me check. Hang on. Allow Listen me your three seconds. Not with burning hands. Initiative. Not with burning hands? Let's see. I'm trying to figure out where we are here. A 15 foot range? I think so. Click on that. Uh, yeah, burning hands should have a 15 foot range. I thought 15 foot. Oh, boy. Alright, I guess All right, not burning on this boy. Oh, wow. I am super low in the initiative. Uh, they're not quite as low as you are. Yeah, I know. I'm going last. Though, to be yes, fair, I did take time to scamper and... Yeah, so... so Karma, you initiated yeah. the combat, so you actually go first. Right. You have, well, a, I guess I can you have a surprise right. round, basically. You can do... All right, well, yeah, I'd like to be whipping out... So how many yes. each one of these squares is five? Mm -hmm. You should be able to measure it. Uh, or can I? Yep. It's accurate on this thing. Ah, perfect. 35, okay, so we see. Ah, yes. That's terrible. Like so well, he needs so I'm basically going to come over here to just do this. I've been walking up. I, these guys, two, three, two, four, five. You know, this is the second time this group has gone into a tavern brawl. It is, yes. It's like tavern brawls. Okay, let's see. What Except this time it's against humanoid creatures. Yes, it is. And not yeah. a not a giant Eden. Oh yeah, you're missing out on a lot of context. Uh what you... <laughs> wait, Alex? Uh, okay, Alex had a high has a higher dex, probably. Uh yes, I have plus six. Oh wait. <laughs> Whoa! I have plus six initiative. I have plus four I have yeah, I have plus six initiative because I get to add my charisma. Mm. Fifteen feet. So that means it's gonna get close to t uh, ten as I build up my charisma. <laughs> Oh my god. And right. I have advantage on it. So, Karu, you actually book it over towards this thing, run up the steps onto the, like, the bard's podium, and what are you doing? Yeah. Well, if I'm up there, I, I can't reach these guys with burning hands. Mostly because civilian. You right. can't reach them, but civilians. Yeah. Right. I can't Unless reach Unless I said Karu was at least lawful. Or at least right. no, no, absolutely. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna crush these guys with that. But I do want to hit him with something here. How much? I mean, I can do a chromatic orb. Can I hit? Can I hit? That's a single target spell. I don't want to do single target. I want to hit, hit them all. All right. Well, you thinking about that? I'd like I to ask all. how everyone is preparing for combat. Let's start with Zara. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fire he the light crossbow. I'm just like, oh boy. So you have the light crossbow out, you are under the table. Zaroth. Yep. <laughs> Fireball. Fireball. Previously, Ravana. I would like to rage. You could <laughs> take her. Okay, we're doing that in a second. How does it look when you're getting ready to rage? What do you do? You're sitting on the so, stool, and then these guys break in. What are you doing? First thing. So I'm sitting on, I'm sitting on the stool, see the guys come in. So I stand up, turn, grab my axe. And so, like y'all have, since y'all have seen me, I I'm dressed like the typical barbarian. I've got pants on, scale mail pants, and then like one shoulder piece with a strap that runs down, uh, runs down like across my chest. But I've got tattoos that run from my hands up my chest and up alongside my face. So as I'm getting to rage, you start seeing these tat like, uh, like these tattoos start expanding, like not growing wider, but like more, nice. like. Artwork is coming off of them and spreading across more of my face and across my body. Whoa, cool. 
Okay, so that's how, that Death Cap, true. how are you getting ready for combat? Um, after seeing them kick open a door, I'm gonna like jump up, kind of like a, a little squat, looking around terrified, and then before Zer or while Zeroth is raging, I'm gonna use my movement to like just climb on his back, thinking, "This is good. This is good. They have to hit him if they want to hit me." <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, right, Alex. So finally, can... how are? You... Sorry. Okay, Car, are you ready? I'm ready when you guys are. Okay, sorry, Alex, how are you preparing for combat? Uh, I pull out my sword, my rapier, and I feel as if a bit of magical energy is starting to swell up within me. Ooh, here it goes. All right, Ooh, Haru, what are you doing? All right, I'm uh. I'm gonna fireball them from here, oh, and I'm gonna use evocation oh, magic to us not to hit the not to hit the um, civilian. Right. Oh, that's the answer then, that's right? And as far as that way, can't do work. that. Haru, where are you in the initiative? I'm in the shit in the initiative because I did, you I thought I was initiative. He got so, zero somehow. I got, like, <laughs> I, got, I got a nat one. Oh, so you get inspiration? Yes. By the way, um, to ter no, um, Zaros. We, whenever you roll a natural one, you gain initiative. I'm um, not initiative, bloody hell. You gain inspiration <laughs> in this game. <laughs> you whenever gain you roll initiative. One, you gain an extra initiative point. No, that's not how that works. <laughs> it seems like it based on what I'm doing. Anyway. <laughs> Haru, what are you doing? Fireball? All right, so yeah, on top of that bard stand, I sculpt the fireball spell around the civilian to strike the middle of the guards in the back that'll spread out and hit the other ones. This so I'm gonna give you a roll. I I whip my hands around like Kung Fu style, you know, Askiranan Kaira Sotan Sotari Karan. Boom, shoot the thing right out. And it fires out of my hands, whipping around the side of the face. It's like it's a little um a you know, ball. A little like a candle sized little whiff of uh, flame that just shoots out and then goes around and then in the middle of this thing bursts into an, extra an extraordinarily large ball of flame. Awesome. So the three in the back here, they failed. The two in the front succeeded. So as you whip your fireball forwards and it just spins around the civilians like <laughs> almost like a little firefly and just avoiding people and then explodes, just ruptures. These stone walls here, because as the divot goes down, the walls turn into stone as it goes in like underground almost. These oh, yeah. people here, they're like, oh shit! And they try to scramble for the door as the fireball explodes. So the three in the back get absolutely scorched. Oh. And they are bloodied. Oh. And the two in the front. They actually duck and dive roll out of the way, and they are not bloody. Dive out of the way of a completely AOE oh, attack. Completely AOE attack, <laughs> this makes guy? sense. Oh, hang what on, did you use evocation, guy? like the sculpt spells to make yes, sure that Tyrant I sculpted the spell to get past that guy, and I blew it up in the center of like, it is 20 feet, but that guy got, the fire was like whipped around him, so he's like probably shitting his pants right now, but not. He's not, seen not, plenty not. of magic, so Terahan Aspidos is not affected. He's like, Good shit, Karu, keep that up! <laughs> as he turns and he like, kind of flourishes his cape, so as he looks like he didn't get hit and it was his fault, but it was really you, and he just pulls out his wand. <laughs> okay. All right, um, Alex, top of the round. Uh, it's these guys, right? Or who is this? Uh, why am I drawing? <laughs> that, good question, good question. That's, that's Asphodus, that's our wizard pal. I'm gonna make it to the okay, so name. There you go. Yeah, okay. Now you can tell who's who. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, wait, is that a who bad guy, that guy or a good guy? <laughs> yeah, that's okay, so good he, guy, he's, he's bad guy. Then. Uh. I guess I'm just gonna, uh... I looked up see. generic, like, witch hunter, and none of them had tricorn hats, so I just went with this picture for the minis. So well, that's a thing. I can barely tell what they look like. 
I'm just going to take one step forward and throw a dart Ooh, at this okay. guy. Cool. Uh... Bullseye. Bullseye. There we go. And then I'm also going to use the inspiration that I apparently have. Ooh, right. You roll with advantage. Oh, baby. Oh, nice. So which one are you throwing it up? Is it this one? Uh, or I'm, this one? Oh, uh, it was this guy. Uh, did not ping. Uh... Says seven damage. Seven damage, that is correct. Is it this and one then, in the front here? Yeah, and then of course uh, an additional four because it was the max from crit. Oh, right, yeah. So that's seven, that's normal damage, you have four. That's, a, that that's 11 damage. Pushes him over and he is bloody. And then, oh, wait a second. And, uh. Oh, you get sneak attack. Oh, it, Jeez. Yeah, because oh, I. Oh, no, I don't get sneak attack. Okay. Wait. Because there's no ally near it, and you're not in a one v one without any enemies. Yeah, so yeah, it's just the eleven damage. Okay, awesome. Is that your turn? That's um, your turn. Oh no, because I got I, no, I did because I got the advantage. So that was that is sneak attack. Oh, you're right, because with advantage you have sneak attack. Because I use the inspiration, so that way I could get sneak attack. Okay, so roll oh, sneak attack God. damage. Fifteen. Fifteen and with then... a fucking dart, you kill him. Plus plus eighteen. Holy shit! You kill him. How do you want to kill him? What does it look like when Alex does this? He got him in the weeds for the head. Uh, yeah, I just throw the dart at his throat and then he just <laughs> kind of just sits there and goes. Oh. And then he just kind of dies at the end of his, end of his at turn? the start of his next turn. Okay, cool. He just he's just like focusing on the fact that his throat has been cut open. He's bleeding a lot, and then he just dies. He just <laughs> dies. <laughs> <laughs> he just dies, you know, in the normal way. Death cap, you're up. Um, so question: Can I tell if any are wearing any metal? Yes, I, it does not appear that they're wearing metal armor now. They have shields on their arms, but they're made of wood. Made of wood. Okay. Um. And it okay. seems almost intentional. Shit. They know my plan. <laughs> <laughs> they seem very hard. They seem like they know adventurer's tricks and somehow have prepared for that as if they knew that's what they were going to be fighting. Um, so, Odie but goodie. Um. See the distance. I should have did this earlier. Um, distance size. Aroth, you were on deck. Fuck. Okay. Shit. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use sacred flame on the the main guy, the leader of the group. Okay. Or who I, the leader of the group. Uh, probably the one in the front here, then. When it came out first. Uh, oh. Dex save? Gotcha. We are proficient in dex saves. 24. Yeah, so that missed. That is a 10. Damn. Anything else? Uh, no, I'll, I'll end my turn. I'm, I'm pretty much like bobbing and weaving between the front of Zoroth's head. And trying to get it, but I'm I'm scared that like I see no metal, I know that they're coming after me, so that that or explain I miss. Gotcha, Zara. There's a goblin on your shoulders. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I I would like to rage. Nice. There we go. There we go. As we've been over. So, I, how my guy rages is so you y'all have seen the tattoos like start to like branch out and he like straight vegeto poses when he like rages <laughs> so he just like lets out this insane roar the tattoos finish spreading and it's just like he's covered in like these brand like you can still see the gray almost pale white skin but these black tattoos are like all over nice. and 
I'm gonna. Sp is it gonna like hurt my movement with having him on my shoulders? No. Okay, then it's fun I'm going to. Stuff. Okay, then I'm gonna sprint forward because I have 40 feet of movement. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, wow. I'll just so I want to sprint as close as I can to get to as close to them as I can. Cool. You should have control of your token. You should be able to move it for yourself. I'm pretty sure, unless I did something dumb. 10, 15, 20, 25. So it should be right in front of. Everhand, yep. And then death caps on your shoulders. So and when Ken's like dashing towards them, I'm just gonna go. Oh. <laughs> 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 you like didn't think this through. <laughs> You're like so, leaping and uh, bounding, and you jump over Karu because he's in your way. Land in front, push past Tarahan, sling your axe off, right? Yeah, uh, and this guy's still up, right? Oh yeah, still up. Alright, in that case, I want to use my, uh... I want to use my feet, Great Weapon Master. Ooh, nice. Minus five to the roll, so, plus ten to damage. Yeah. And then oh. I'm swinging, swinging with the great axe. Oh, that's not gonna hit. It's minus five, so nine. Yeah, no, I think that is. Is that the minus five? No, I did the full attack with the. Oh, I guess if I rolled a regular if, if it uh, rolled... d twenty. It would have. Yeah. It doesn't roll with the minus five. Okay. Yeah, so you, it's just the you got a nine plus five. How'd you get a plus five? Well, I got I got five? a nine plus five, but then I also got it minus five, so it'd just be a nine. Yeah, because the plus five is his uh, proficiency bonus, plus his strength. Yeah, bonus. three. So your strength is sixteen, correct? Yes. That's a no, plus three. Uh, my strength is my strength is fourteen. What? Oh, okay. level six. You get plus All three right. proficiency. You get three proficiency. So, okay, that makes sense. If your strength's fourteen, sixteen. Got it. All right. So you swing I'm your going. axe over towards him. And you like hold it up above your head, barely missing death cap. Swing it downwards and leave a solid dent in the floor, but the the kind of hunter-looking guy dodges backwards. What were you gonna say? I have a second. I have a second attack. Oh, you do. Okay, so you first one buries into the floor, yank it out, and swing it again. This is without the minus five. Okay. Twenty-three. That hits. Boom. Ten. Ugh. Oh shit! He hits hard. Run, mates! Run, mates! Go! Don't let them go! I'll take this one myself! And you can see he's pulling out a... a what looks like a whip. Alright, is that uh, anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Alright. Uh, the commoners are going to start panicking and running away. Except, so these, one, these guys are actually just gonna freeze. They've got fight, flight, and freeze. Except this one, who's enraged by the death of his son. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, up to here. He charges forwards and pulls out a dagger. And it's like screaming a blood-curdling cry as he goes to attack. And <laughs> totally misses. Frenzied swipes just going everywhere as he whacks his... Fudge. I just dropped something, sorry. As he whacks his dagger against the stone walls and actually hits himself on the funny bone, but he can't really do anything else there. That's his turn. The Kenan Muin. Uh, look. Before they go, um, this one here pulls out his, um, his shot crossbow and is going to, instead of using it, touches his, bu his buddy in the front on the back. Like, you got it, boss! And you see this golden energy pulsate through him and the one in the front here just becomes a blur as a moment as this guy in the back casts haste Haste. and then he's gonna move five ten feet out the door leaving the door open this one here is gonna take out his shot crossbow and he is going to make two attacks one of which is gonna be with a whip and the other with a shot crossbow both on Zeroth. the whip the lash i should say is a 19 uh, that I will. Yeah, it hits. Eleven points of slashing damage. Okay, I'm. I am in a rage. You get half damage. So that for means. That one. Yes, you I only take, take five. Six, five. Five. Round down. And then as the whip coils around you, it 
like even though you're in a rage, it seems magically enhanced as it pushes your arms to your sides and restrains you. You were restrained. And he cannot use this this whip or move anywhere else, but he is going to use his shot crossbow to take a shot at your head. 24. They're getting good ass rolls. That around. hits. Take 12 points of lightning damage. I I want to use my uh I want to use my stone's endurance uh, take, feet, uh, trait. Take the damage down by 1d12 plus constitution, I'm pretty sure. 1d12 plus 2, yeah. Nice. Alright, roll that 1d12. I take nothing. <laughs> you take no damage! <laughs> you take no- can You're I, just- You're can, restrained. Can I, uh, yeah, describe this, Can I say this, how I think this happens? Please, absolutely. So he- So I'm restrained, and he pulls and shoots, and I just raise up, and catch it in my teeth and spit it on the ground. Whoa! It's like a bullet, but like charged with electrical power. As you catch it midair and spit it to the ground, he drops the lash and runs. 5, 10, 15, <laughs> Intimidation. 20, and then he's going to use a bonus action to cast Misty Step. 10, 15, off the map, he's gone. All right, um, this one over here is going to actually take out the net swing it forwards and try to chuck it at Terahan, actually at Karu, as he uses his Magician's Net. 22 to hit you, Karu. Alright. That is 8 points of lightning damage. And as the right. as the net flashes around you, you feel your arms pressed up against your sides as well as you were restrained, and while restrained in this way, you cannot cast spells. That's all oh, damn. And then he's also going to make another attack with his uh, with his shock crossbow at um, let's go with he's going to attack the commoner. Oh no! Thirteen, <laughs> which hits, and he knocks the commoner unconscious. Luckily, not killing him, but whoa! He's I want to knock unconscious. As the shock. The, as like the shock dart sticks into its side, electrifying this poor old farmer. He leans against the wall and slumps downwards as he's, his body's just jerking and jolting. Uh, what, what were you going to say, Deathcap? Oh no, I was joking. I was saying I want to use uh, fireball, non-lethal. <laughs> <laughs> non-lethal fireball. Um, remind me, did this guy go yet? Uh, I'm not sure. I no, he hasn't yet. He hasn't? Alright, he's hasted. No, you started with the guys in the back. He's hasted. Yeah. Uh, no, that's because, yeah, because this guy went, then this guy uh, ran out. This guy went. And this then this went. guy went. That guy yeah, then this one. So but he's hasted. He's hasted, that's correct. I'm going to actually put an icon on for that. Yeah. going to do a little boot. So are that, we that saying is... he went or hasn't gone yet? I think he has, has not gone. Awesome. Yeah, has that is not. beautiful. All right. He is going to... Also, uh, Zeroth, you are no longer restrained. Okay. All right. He is going to use his action. He's going to move 5, 10 feet here. And seeing Alex, he's going to use his lash once and shot crossbow twice because he's hasted. Oh. Eight to hit you for the first one, so it totally misses. Wait, is he is he running past me? Uh, he is still within your range, so you can't get Oh, he's not. Yeah. yeah. And then he is going to actually use his other one to use his magician's net. 18. On you, Alex. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so that is going to hit you for 10 points of lightning damage. Ooh. And you are restrained. And then finally, he's going to use his shot crossbow on... Paddywhack is not visible. He's going to turn around and shoot it over his shoulder at Deathcap. 17. Does he have disadvantage because he's because he's, because he's using point. it in melee range? Nine. Oh, yeah, that, that was his... Oh, he just shoots it, but... <laughs> he's right. shooting it behind his back, so that's why he missed. That's why he missed. He just shoots it over his shoulder, and then he is going... That is all of his extra actions and stuff. Um, he yeah. doubled? Uh, uh, 
action. Yep, speed is yes, doubled. Yes, his movement speed is doubled. So he's going to risk the opportunity And he has attack. plus 2 AC. He does, yes. So he's risking the opportunity to attack, moving 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. Because oh he moved 5 feet. God. And that's going to oh, be his Lord. turn. Uh, Zaroth, you can get an opportunity attack on him. Opportunity attack's a reaction, right? Correct. Yeah. I've already I already used my reaction. All right, Stone's endurance. Oh yeah, Stone's yeah. endurance. Good catch. Good call. Good catch. Which All means right. it's now my turn. Oh yeah. Does Deathcap get a reaction? Yeah, what, Death yeah when Deathcap oh. get a yeah. Good point, Deathcap. Would you like to make a melee yeah. attack against this guy? Um, <laughs> look, try to see if I can rack him with my my um. Quarter staff. Have, yeah, my wooden staff. Um, I, oddly enough, it's not shown up in my inventory has a weapon. No, I can't. Uh, I, it's, is it equipped? My stat count Ish. has a druid, druidic focus, not a weapon. Oh, okay. Uh, Any other melee weapons? Um, I'm, I'm on Zura, so I won't be able to, like, punch him. I'm too that's small. true. <laughs> that's, that's why, I'm sorry, I was confused. I didn't see death cap, so I was like, because... I can see Zeroth, but I can't see Deathcap, which is weird. So that was a little disorienting. That's my bad. Sorry, I missed you there. No, no. I, I don't have magic spells, but as a feat, so I'm I'm not gonna do anything. Gotcha. You can attempt an honor harm strike for one damage. Paddywhack. <laughs> 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 my turn. Okay, so first, bonus action. I'm going to call my Steel Defender able to action. Okay. Nice. What? All right, let me check in and see if I have a, a thing for this. All right, we're just gonna use Steel Defender. I'm just gonna use an animated armor. Yeah, just just use that because it's basically just like a. It's basically just a. It's based, so as an art as a uh, battlesmith artificer. Uh, yeah. I have a Steel Defender that I can. Yep. And it, seeing that some of them were trying to escape. <laughs> I love it. Yes, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man, that's yeah, awesome. Yep. So basically, what happens is I call out, "Abel, timed, Abel, get your ass over here!" And then in the cart, oh and my god, they just glow as its single cyclopic red eye. Jesus. Star Galactica style. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. It gets up, leaps out of the out of the cart. And then just bolts towards this one guy. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Well, I I didn't think that we'd actually be dealing with this part of the fight. So, well, there's the rest of the map for you. <laughs> um, is it, it's oh, going no, for this well, one. Well, uh, yeah, because that because unfortunately because that's like the most clear target. And Steel Defender has an attack. Oh, let me get out of this guy. Oh, this is awesome. It is, yeah. Uh, I didn't realize you had that. That's awesome. Yes, that battle. That's one. Of, that's one of the reasons I did Battlesmith because then I can be both support and offense. Yeah, that's fucking sick. Yeah. Is I mean, this supposed to be a large there. creature? Is it? No. Okay, well, that's small. A steel defender is a medium construct. Okay, there it is. It has a forty-foot movement, and it's a and it's action. Is force empowered rend? Whoa! It does one d eight plus two force damage. Oh, sick! All right, roll attack. As this, uh, as this fleeing hunter just turns and sees this massive steel creature with cyclops eye just barreling at it, it he just shrieks. And that okay, was, so that's slash, uh, roll d twenty. Plus four. Damn it! <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, he misses. He just fumbles exactly. and it hits the floor and then stands back up and just turns the Cyclops' eye to look at the person here. Mm -hmm. Can't believe really, And that was all my bonus action, keep in mind. Oh my god. I saw my main action. My bonus action was just to call him to action. He was technically supposed to go after me, but. Oh, yeah. okay, that's fine. Yeah. Same and now person. is my main action. Seeing that I have now revealed myself, get out from under the table, leap onto it, take take aim at this fucker over here, and 
with the quickly reloading of my crossbow, take two shots at him. Nice. Nice. So, first attack. 18. 18. Your crossbow bolt thunk, just hits him in the shoulder as he's running. He's like, he's almost a blur, but you you squint with one eye and just shoot it. 24. Perfectly hit, perfectly hit him once, load it back, perfectly hit him twice. Once in the shoulder, once in the back. Full damage. Yeah. So seven for the first and nine for the second. Nice. He's unconscious. He's down. How do you want to do this? <laughs> this, this is epic kobold, who is actually the shortest possible size of a kobold with metal legs mm. and white scales, has just knocked out this fucker. Nice. And is now going to. And now is going. Like she saw all of that. She's gonna go over and yoink his shock crossbow. <laughs> nice. nice. Okay. I didn't expect oh. that. <laughs> I did well, not expect you to do that. Well, obviously, if I if if Paddywhack sees something that's just like, ooh, ooh. that's neat, she's awesome. gonna take it. Awesome. All right. Uh, is that so your turn? Awesome. So awesome. Uh, yes. That that is the end of my turn. Arahan Aspidos <laughs> is going to wait. Did I delete? No, there it is. All right. Cool. Um, he is going to cast Misty Step to teleport. 30 feet out the door, because the door is open. And then he's going to A, he's going to... Well, hello there. I see you're trying to go somewhere. Let's have a chat, you and me. Well, I don't need you alive, do I? I just need you cold or otherwise. And then he's going to cast Magic Missile at third level on this dude. Actually, he's going to spread his fingers and do it at both of them. The third level, that would be three, six darts. Correct me if I'm wrong. Five? Five darts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, starting targeting three on the first one. The first one is down. Holy shit. Second one, all right, that's two more on this one. Oh, that's terrible damage. Two, three, okay, that's five, plus one. <laughs> oh, hang on, two seconds. Yeah, it's just five oh. damage, all right. Uh, this one is mortal. All right, that is his turn. And what the shot? Oh, oh wait, sorry. He can't do that. He can't cast two level spells in a turn. Nope. So he's what, gonna level do that. Set. He's gonna cast. Actually, uh, he's gonna do a fireball. And that would be. Wait, hang on. The, the, okay, he he does two d ten. Whoa. I mean, why can't he spam his spell slots? Uh, all right, but he does maximum damage with the fireball and deals 20 damage to this one here and instantly kills him. Oh my That's something. Uh, Wait, I, what? How do you do that? How does, it's, it's, did 2D he 10, it's 2d10, and he rolled 10s on oh. that the dice. Oh! Uh, awesome. Haru, mm -hmm. it's your turn. Now, I'm, I'm sitting here wriggling, fuming in this net that I'm stuck in. Can I get out of that? Yeah, you certainly can. Uh, make an... Let me just check how restrained works. I think breaking it is an athletics check. All right, I'm doing. I'm using my inspiration for this. Ooh, nice! There we go. So athletics check. Uh, shift. Oh. oh God, are you serious? Oh no! I'm still wriggling around and I'm yelling like. I'm in. Asphodos, yep. I thought you said we were safe here. Sorry, I didn't realize. This is a totally new thing here. <laughs> Never seen these like, people around. around. That's what tracking you. Getting all like, tied up and tripping. I trip and I fall on the stupid table. <laughs> I'm wriggling along. <laughs> no. You're hopping. You're hopping. Amazing. I'm hopping on one leg. I get my foot caught in the stupid net and I fall <laughs> over. Great. <laughs> okay, anything else? Well, actually, you can oh, still cast spells, by the way. I can't cast spells in the, in the net. Oh, in the net, you're right. You can't cast spells. I yeah. literally said that and put that down in the magician's net description. Okay. Yeah. Um. Anything else? Point, finally. I can't do anything, anything else. That's an action, action to try to break out. Alex, stop the round. Uh, I'm going to try and break out of my net, too. Athletics check. Uh, athletics check? Oh, no. I guess it's just... <laughs> oh, my God. All right, you're still stuck. Yay! Death cap. Death cap. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
Just well, hear hold him on, hold outside on, when, when up, the... Uh, uh, so... Can I talk to Deathcap on his turn? Yeah. Okay, I just wanna... I, I like, I just wanna... Look at him and say... If you kill this one, I'm going to choke slam you off my shoulders. <laughs> and <laughs> he just keep looking at this... At the guy in front of me. Oh my god! <laughs> Deathcap, how do you respond to that? My my mouth is just like wide open, like I was gonna say something, but it's caught in my voice, and I'm I'm just gonna go. And I am. <laughs> oh, I, I'm gonna pat him on the back as I cast bless. <laughs> There's one guy left. I, I'm just gonna oh, feel yeah. like I love this. I'm your <laughs> like nerve, like don't kill me. <laughs> I think I made a grave mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Zara, whenever, you, <laughs> whenever you make an attack roll or saving throw before the spell ends, you can roll a d4 to add to the roll. Oh wait. Okay. No, because because since he like pretty much intimidated the fuck out of me, I'm casting it at dirt level. <laughs> Oh, oh my god! What does that do at third it level? It just makes it so that more people can be affected by it. Oh, so, so that doesn't even matter. No, but it, he's targeting all of it towards Zara. <laughs> well, <laughs> as you know, it could be Zara, and since it's a range of 30 all feet, Alex, Alex and Karhu could also do it. Yeah, they could. It, it's, I, I wasn't aware of what I was doing. I was just that intimidated, like, okay. Okay. You're like, here you go, here you go. Lots of power, love the role play, that's awesome. Um, I want to <laughs> give you inspiration for that, but we have our that one system, so I really can't. <laughs> Sorry. Actually, technically you still can, the DM can still give it. Alright, just... take inspiration for that, that's awesome. <laughs> that's just yeah. the, the way to get it without the DM. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, um, Wait, who's who's I... taking the inspiration? Uh, Deathcap's taking inspiration. <laughs> okay, cool. From that. That was For basically act. pissing his pants and dropping a third level spell on you. Third level spell <laughs> without needing that. That's great. Okay, uh, Zara. I'm get Alex in mouth. Help me. <laughs> and we're both sitting here with a a, a net over us. <laughs> Zara. Uh, I'm gonna step forward five feet towards this guy. And I'm gonna reach out and just try to wrap my hand around his throat and just choke slam him. Oh like I said, to do to that. Yep. Okay. Make an attack? <laughs> you can add a d4 to that. Uh, that yeah. won't hit if you add the d4. We'll see. That hits! Oh, oh my god! That hits! <laughs> That's what you so needed to hit him. Beats it, beats it. Uh, and then. I want to say that... Okay, it's not a weapon, so it's just three damage. Three points of damage. Nice flavor, take inspiration. <laughs> Alright, I'm, I'm bringing back the DM can give you inspiration too thing. But I still have a second attack. <laughs> oh my god, so you slam him to the ground, and then you take your... What are you going to do with the second one? For this one, I'm... Since he's on... Since he's on the he's ground... Prone. You have a oh, so... yeah. I have advantage already. Yeah. In that case, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the great weapon master again. Oh my god! So, so I'm just gonna roll a I'm just gonna roll a flat d20 because the minus five takes away my proficiency. That works. So okay, makes sense. Just... It does, yeah. We got a decapitation going on here. Oh yeah, you grab him, <laughs> choke slam him to the ground, take your axe and swing it down. Oh my god. Um, it that's, right that's, that's, next that's not to that's it. advantage. Remember advantage. There we go. That 13. hits. Thirteen. Okay. 13. So. Minus five. No, you you roll. No, because you you roll a, a flat oh, roll. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's cool. A flat roll. So, so then damage, and I get plus ten to the damage. Yep, plus ten to the damage. Wow. Nineteen. 19. Um, you just already okay. described how you want to do this. So you oh grab him, God. choke slam him to the dying. ground, take your axe, and do you lop his head off. Uh, no, I bury it like. Right below his breastplate, like right below where his uh text would be, and just split him in two. Oh my god! <laughs> That's so okay. You grab him, 
choke slam him to the ground. Deathcap, you're holding on this whole time. There's no hair to cling to on this Goliath, so you're just kind of grabbing his forehead. <laughs> and as he rears back, you nearly fall off. As Zeroth swings his axe downwards, and with just a like the barely the faintest hint of a grunt, just so easy for him, cleaves this guy in half down the midsection. Is that your turn? I have 35 feet of movement, you so do. I want to sprint outside for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, for 35 feet. So I'm right behind the, uh... Well, no, it would be the, 30 feet because you used 5 feet to move up to right, here. Right, that's true. Uh, so, so would my... it... Okay, so it would be... How, how much would I move? Uh, you move 30 Just feet. Just 30? You can go here. Okay, so I move here, and... Passing by a robot... <laughs> Yeah, while I'm running, I just kind of like, while I'm running, I just kind of hand my uh, great axe up to Deathcap and grab a javelin off my back. Uh, also, I like and to point out that you have plus two to damage with melee attacks. I didn't realize yeah. that. It might be more. I'm also level. since I'm in a rage, I'm also frenzied. So for my bonus action, I'd like to throw this javelin at the guy running away. Oh, you don't even need to have your bonus action for that, because with Great Weapon Master, when you reduce a creature to zero hit points, you can use your bonus action to make it attack. Oh, yeah. So then you totally I didn't even can. think about that. I, I took Great Weapon Master for the minus five plus ten damage. Uh, yeah, that has to be a melee good. attack. Yeah, so I'm going to use my javelin and just... Alright, we'll attack. It's the last one. Add uh, uh, the d4. Like, oh yeah. Actually, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry, because the AC is 17. You met you oh. met it, beat it earlier. So you fling your javelin with like all your muscles. might. Your muscles ripple, and it goes so far into the forest and sticks right into this tree, like the tree trunk. Goes what about three feet in, right in front of this running dude, and he just skids to a halt in front of the hilt of this javelin that just buried itself halfway through a tree. Yeah, and I'm just screaming. I'm screaming at him, I'm gonna catch you. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, the commoners are not doing anything. Uh, I like this guy. What were we gonna say, Death I'm, I'm using my reaction to just go like, you do it, I get job! Like, out of pure fear. This is amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah I'm, gonna uh, up, on, I'm gonna look up at Death Cap and just go, I wasn't gonna choke slam you and feel free to kill this one. <laughs> Oh, during the sprint, during the sprint outside past the robot, I'm yelling this to Deathcap. <laughs> okay. Um, that happens. Oh wait, doesn't he get to roll a, uh, the four because it was an attack? Yes, because, well, but it's a ten. It would have missed because his AC, the uh, creature's AC is seventeen. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So this thing, this guy is absolutely terrified. He turns around. <laughs> takes out his whip, cracks it on the ground, and purple energy snaps out of the tip of the whip, comes up in front of him, and turns into a circle. He grabs forwards into the circle and pulls, and then a portal appears behind Zeroth, and out of its, like, when he pulls his hand forwards, chains lash out, and he's trying to cast whole person on you as these chains try to grab you and, and hold you in place. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh no! A barbarian's greatest weakness. Uh, don't it's forget. It's either wisdom or intelligence. That's usually the one that gets. Uh, add a d4 to that, remember, because of bless. It's not gonna matter. <laughs> it's not gonna matter. <laughs> yeah, you're running forwards, you fling this javelin, and then he turns, casts a spell, and you suddenly see these purplish chains flash around you, and you are paralyzed. You just can't move. <laughs> and then he's gonna Wait, use... can you use... Can you use inspiration on uh yeah. on saving throws? We usually I'm gonna uh, use, you can use it on any die roll just uh, for future reference. Try to say that before you're making the save, but I'll let you do it this time. Yeah. I, right. Okay, I didn't think about it. Okay. Let's see. You haven't been you haven't been doing this rule rule in a while because we did luck points beforehand. Yeah, and then I add the d4. Yep. Okay. <laughs> 16. The chains wrap around you. You flex your muscles and break them. Just every single chain link shatters and turns into pixie dust as you are, you completely succeed the saving throw. <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. This guy's absolutely fucking terrified. He is not sticking around. Uh, that's his turn. <laughs> Do you guys just want to wrap this up narratively? Because there's one dude left. 
Uh, yeah. uh, we gotta catch Let's just guy. get back to, to their turn again. <laughs> just have them go off and do that, just for the fun of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. just, oh, Death, oh, Death, 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 Death Cap first. Death Cap's just along for the ride. Yeah, he is. Alright. <laughs> Death Cap, what are you doing? Death. I'm scared shitless, and I'm just like, do it, Slash. Because I'm like casting poison spray at this. Okay, <laughs> take roll attack. Uh, it's a con. Oh, it's a con save. Alright, got it. Got it. It's the 22, natural 20. Wow, that is unfortunate. So the poison no, uh, spray. Hmm? Oh, it's, it's, it has, has a range of 10, 10 feet. feet. <laughs> oh. oh. Entangle him. Entangle him. Oh my god. Is I, 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 going to continue to do that knowing that it's 10 feet? No, no. Uh, yeah. How far away is he? He's 50, 50 feet away. 50 feet away. <gasps> As Karu and Alex are just like in in this tavern, restrained. Yeah, like I would have I would have gone over to release one of yep. them. As that's happening, like, you guys friend. actually managed to wriggle your way out. E. All right. So what are you doing, Deathcap? Whoa! Oh my God! Wow! Are you okay? Whoa. Conjure animals. What animals are you conjuring? I I am going to conjure, uh. Let me make sure I'm reading this correctly. I I want to conjure, if I could, a brown bear <laughs> right in right in front of him. Right in oh, front. Yeah. Of him. <laughs> because it's got a range of sixty feet. <laughs> Boom! There's a fucking bear now. What does this look like? Um, bear. It, it was basically a ghostly room of. Oh. Uh, Bear you and then two of them. Oh uh, yeah, I get two. So um, oh my god, they're, they're they're challenge rating one. Oh my gosh, you want to flank them? Yeah, I want to flank them. So uh, Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> just, just corner him, and I'm I'm gonna cast it, and it's like there you go. So as, as I cast, <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Oh. Okay, <laughs> I'm so two glad massive I bears. You <laughs> Just appear. Okay, <laughs> is that your turn? Um. Uh, well, can you well, command now, 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 now the bears have to roll initiative. Do, you, do they? No, they, they go directly after me. All right. How, what do you command them to do? Um, I'm gonna have the both of them swat him backwards towards the, our new Goliath buddy. Wait. So you're not having them kill him? Um, I'm not having him kill him. I figured alive, we can get more in. Oh, God! <laughs> what so the brutal. The other one's just gonna, like, body slam him down. Okay. Alright, they're gonna contest athletics checks. Holy shit. They both rolled sixes, but the bears have a significantly higher strength bonus. So... Yeah. Yeah, obvious. Very... Wait, no, they have the same strength bonus. Really? They both have plus four? Both of them have eight. Bear has advantage because of the other bear. Okay, that's true. That's true. I'm, I'm... It's the same roll! I rolled two sixes! I rolled another six! <laughs> Alright, I'll try that one. Alright, there we go. 20. Cool. So the bears just push this guy, knock him prone, and then also shove him like ten feet backwards. And then they're actually just gonna stand in front of him here. <laughs> Okay. Oh my God. Is that all the bears are gonna do? Uh, yeah. I, I'm just gonna have the one bear just stay on top of them. Sit. Okay. Oh, just man. sitting on them. Is there all? Oh. Oh. I'm catching up. Okay. Forty foot movement. <laughs> you can make Five. it. Okay. Yeah. I'm just. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get there. Here. Okay. So he's already on the ground, right? I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna take my two hand axes off my belt, and I don't want to kill him. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm. I'm gonna ask Deathcap, alive or dead. Uh, uh, Oldest way you could say that, bro. <laughs> Are we interrogating him, or do you want me to finish him now? 
Dragon Animals has a list of things you can turn into. You could use this as a guide for what you can turn into as a druid. Um, de Death Cap. Uh -oh. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> Death Cap is just stunned. <laughs> he doesn't know what to say. I'm gonna reach back and like pat him on the head and be like, hey, answer. Uh, um, uh, uh, kill him. That, that one mage said it doesn't matter if you're cold, I just need your body. So I'm gonna take both of my hand axes. Both of these, I don't want. I don't want to kill him with these because I'm aiming for his knees. Okay. Oh my god. That's <laughs> aiming for his knees. knees? And he's prone, right? Yeah, so this he's is, prone. This you is with advantage. advantage. Okay, we need it. Yeah. Yep, that hits. Seventeen. That hits. And then the second one, that hits anyway. It's Definitely a dirty twenty. Hits. Yep. Roll damage. So. Plus, plus at least two. Hang on. I think uh, it's plus, plus three. four, so it'd be plus four. Wow. Wait. So yeah, because it's two for the weapon, and then it's two because I'm still enraged. Okay. Wow. So ten on the first. Six on. I so sixteen. Sixteen yeah, non-lethal. Yeah, he's done. Not he, lethal. He only has eleven hit points. Oh my god. So with the first attack, like... he passes out. Okay. Can I like hit him? A, can I like hit him a little softer so he stays conscious? You just <laughs> chopped off his leg. I I have a good. I don't want to chop him off. I just want to like pin his legs to the ground. There's um, a bone there. <laughs> hand, axes. hand axes, not daggers. Okay, his legs are gone. Okay, his legs yeah. are fucking gone now. He so, lost his knee to the jizz. Yeah, he he lost he he took an arrow to the knee or maybe an entire axe to the knee. God, all right, yeah, no, he's definitely unconscious. He, he okay. I, <laughs> he took a fusro duh arrow <laughs> and axe to he, the knee. He's a, he's unconscious, unconscious, right? Correct, correct. So we're out of combat. This is this is no the one who's a, this is yeah. this is the one whose arrow I caught in my mouth, uh, right? Yes. I believe so. Okay, I want to slap. I, I want to slap him awake. This is gonna take some healing magic, or at least the rest, to wake him up, because he is. He had his legs cut out, or cut off. He's bleeding out on the ground. Yeah, he's he's down. Fine, I'm just. I'm just gonna yell. Hope you can hear me in the afterlife and say. Uh, I'm just gonna catch this, and I'm aiming the great axe right at his right at his teeth, just like <laughs> I caught his arrow. I want to see if he can catch my axe. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh my god, you just chop downwards. Do you just- do you want to roll damage, or do you just want to cut his head in I- half? I- I sever- I sever from- I sever right at the mouth, and his- the top just goes, and I'm like, okay, which- which half do we need? He's do we dead. need a leg? Do we need- yeah, I'm asking Death Cap, because he said the guy said, uh, I guess we don't need this one, we just need a body of one of them. So, oh I start walking back and- I start walking back and grab my javelin. Okay, at this point, Alex and Carter, Alex, Carter, and Paddywhack, what are you guys doing? Uh, well, I would have helped, I would have tried to help them get out of the nets. <laughs> After I got out of my net, I'd like to take a look at one of those crossbows. Okay, you... Well, I have mine, and yeah, I'm kind of like, ooh, what's this? So how does this work? <laughs> and I would like the stats for that, please. All right, sure. <laughs> um, I can tell you right now that the shock crossbow is an is a common magic item Ooh. it is a ranged weapon attack obviously um is it which, just a light crossbow but replace piercing with lightning not exactly it has a range of 50 slash 150 feet with one target all right and deals 1d 12 points of lightning damage modified by your dexterity and the target has to succeed on a dc 13 constitution saving throw or be stunned until the start of their next turn Oh, so the shock. Can you put that I'm in like a? That in the chat. I'll put that in the chat. Yeah, yeah put that in the chat. I'm assuming it's like you know, like a normal crossbow. Had you had a dex modifier? Correct, dex modifier. Yep. Dex plus proficient, and I'm not. Pro and I would be proficient. Would I? Is, is this a crossbow? If you're proficient I've with crossbows, you are proficient. Yeah. Yeah, fifty one fifty. Uh, fifty so slash one fifty. Normal yeah. crossbow? It is no. It is a shock crossbow. Or no, I mean like in terms of uh, the type of crossbow. It's a light crossbow. 
Actually, it's a no, crossbow. it's a oh. hand crossbow. A okay. hand crossbow. It's a really strong hand crossbow. Oh, hey, that means you. That, that means Alice can use it with his sneak attack. Yep. Okay. Do you do you also add dexterity? Well, I mean, I could use it. I could use it if it was a light crossbow too. I just checked a little bit ago. Yeah. So you use because it, it's. But yeah, it's a hand crossbow. And then, okay. uh, does it also add in the normal uh, damage plus dex, or is yes. it just is just the damage? Damage plus dex. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have my new shot crossbow that yeah. I'm going to have a lot of fun. Okay, you've got up to four of those. Four of what? Crossbows or four of No, the... sorry, five I, I... shock crossbows. You also have... Well, I'm taking one, too. Okay, you take one of these shock well... crossbows. You also have a lash and a magician's net from each one of these. You have the option to have five of these magician's nets and lashes. Mm. Oh, by the way, the okay. shock crossbows do not uh, come with bolts, they actually have to charge using electrical power. So once... Oh. Th these shock crossbows have up to 20 charges, and once you use all those charges, you're going to have to recharge it, but you don't actually know how at this point. You're going to have to study those I and have find out how. I have identify. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you have to, so mark down on this, in like your notes, that each of these... Okay, the one paddywhack you took, I think it has... 19 out of 20 charges. I don't need to write this okay. in the chat. That is, un that is not useful at all. Charges. 20. So I have 20 charges. And I currently have 19 out of 20. Yep. And then the rest of them, I say every one of these has uh, 19 charges for me. Yeah. All right, then. I'll have to make note to update that everyone who uh, Yep. Uh, all right. Oh, oh, I just got already like this. This is like the second session, Paddywhack, and she and she's already has a new toy to play with. Yep. Technically, two new toys. All right. As I will be taking this guy's magician's net. All right. I'm pasting that in the chat. This is a dexterity modified weapon, and it is really, really powerful. Um. Okay. Here you go. Magician's net. It's a ranged weapon with your decks and proficiency. You're not proficient in it. If you're not proficient with a net, you are not proficient with a magician's net. Good thing I am proficient with in all weapons. All weapons. Okay, so you have proficiency with this That's magician's and net. and martial weapon. Okay. So I am proficient. It is a range of 15 <laughs> feet slash 50 feet, and it has one target. Hit 2d6 plus dex lightning damage, and you are restrained, and while restrained, you cannot cast spells. Uh, annoying. Yeah, really annoying. Very useful if you come upon a, like a wizard or something. You have up to five of these. And then I'll just paste the stats for the lash as well, because you're probably going to take that too. Uh, actually, I'm not going to take that one. Okay, awesome. That one didn't really catch her interest. The magician's then and the shot cross and the shot crossbow, absolutely. The lash, eh, it just looks like a normal whip. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know. Yeah, it looks like it a looks normal fairly, you know. It looks fairly normal. No, she's into the magic shit. Got it. All right, these brooches actually do catch your eye, though. A little bit. They're very colorful. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, probably you ink one of those might be important. It depicts, like, a tower shield with the different sections are black and green alternating. And there is the, like, the, the depiction of a profile head, a very basic human male head, with a dagger behind it diagonally. And also a like an arrow. Six plus number like plus Why the royal it? symbol of um, this, uh, Clan Vizilier, the family family Vizilier, which is that of a unicorn's horn. Hey, by the way, have we damaged their outfits too much? Yes. Crap. They well, all have been take... scorched and like yeah. Black I mean, actually, fire. mine's relatively intact. All I did was to put two crossbows in him. So it's bolt, still... What is it? Saving any one of these that are in sort of intact, if we threw it in the cart, because right now we may need a disguise. Yeah, you could... Them. Some of them are... Yeah, no, absolutely. These are meant the to be... roasted with the fireball, probably not so much, but... In fact, as you're looking at these, they seem to have been patched up several times, 
like they've been in previous combats before and most of them have like slash marks or piercing marks on them where someone has probably been stabbed or slashed um i i have the mending spell we can we can mend the one that that this one slashed in half i also have mending <laughs> Though, others, though I probably would not be able to fit into any of these outfits, so meh. Actually, I think the only ones that could are Alex and Karhu. Um, I'm just gonna pat Zeroth on the back and be like, you did a really good job, buddy. And has I like climb off of him and then instantly run to Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back from scrounging up her uh, her shot crossbow and magician's net. <laughs> Again, uh, stuff anything that like they can't really physically fit on my person. Stuff in the bag, mostly the net. Really out of that shit. Right. What the hell was that? I forgot I was muted. Sorry. Oh, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Uh, proper. I don't know, but I nicked this off of one of them. <laughs> Presents the grill. Yeah, any of you, any of you recognize this? Not at all. Do we? Um. Also, this I'll is let able. Death points over to the robot. Roll a history check. <laughs> also, points over to the robot. This is able. The robot just turns its head and then, like, robotically raises a hand and. The hand just tilts from left to right as it's trying to wave. Wow. <laughs> I taught him that. Yep. I built him, programmed him, taught him that. It nods and lifts up one thumb. Was the wave directed at me? Uh, the wave was directed at whoever Paddywhack was introducing uh, Abel to. It's okay. basically everyone. Basically everyone. So it's just <laughs> waving at everyone. As its head just robotically goes from one person to the next, to the next, to the next. <laughs> You're asking about the recognizing yes, I, I these did crossbows. Yes, I did. Resist. What? If you're asking about recognizing what these shock crossbows are from, I will let Death Cap roll a history check. I, I meant the brooch, but yeah. Oh, the brooch? Uh, Death Cap immediately knows what that is. If he's coming over, then. Oh, yeah. No. Um, um. Sorry, go ahead, Death Cap. No, I'm, 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 I was by zero, so it's like, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm still scared shitless. Hmm. Uh, speaking of zero, what are you doing? I want to walk up to Death Cap and just like pat him on the head and then just walk back in to the, I just want to walk back into the bar and grab the bag that I left. Cause I, I left my backpack on the ground and, uh, I want to grab that and ask it. So am I traveling with y'all? <sighs> well, well, you now understand pretty much everything we understand about Vex Mortem because these clowns were supposed to be the ones hunting us down. I'm talking to Asphodel at this moment, trying to figure out, you know, if there's been any sign of these people before, or um, is there a place where we can go to get to be safe? And did, you know, how did these people find us so quickly? Safety. I will be able to search something like that, maybe. I'll give you a few days. I can have a look in my books, records, something like that, someplace you can be safe. But I can't promise anything. I asked Zara, did that guy get away? Did the last one get away? From the urgent one? Nope. <laughs> uh, he, he, no. Not I'm going to question close. him, bring him back to me, whether he's alive or dead. I can deal with him. The question is, uh, we can't exactly give information if he's dead. <laughs> Watch me. Maybe we'd be more likely to, I look over, like, out of the side of my eyes at Zara, Zara, and I look at the one that's right next to Paddywhack and the robot and say, why don't we try interrogating this one? I'm sure he's in better shape than the one that tried to actually get away from this good unit. Knowing your big burly yeah, that... friend over here, Karu, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> you wish to do it here, uh, I can I can do it here, or you can come back to my boat. 
Later I can study the body. Do you? Might be better to do this kind of thing in private, though I have no idea how you're going to do it, considering, you know, he's <laughs> points, kind of dead. <laughs> like he has a friggin' hole in his chest from that fire, from... Is, is that fire? Yeah, that's, that's a burn mark. He has a hole in his chest. How could you talk about... How? How? <laughs> He fans his fingers in front of his face and, like, wiggles his fingers in the way, like, as they're coming down like a rainbow. Magic. What were you going to say, Death Cat? I, I was just going to look at the kobold and be like, I don't question magic at this point in time. <laughs> I mean, I understand that magic is about, you know, metaphysical correlation between things, but it's... Eh, a metaphysical correlation between cause and effect, but... Yeah. You you make machines go, they make magic go. That's all I know. It's not the same. It's two completely different processes. What I do is is about take is about making physical objects that emulate the metaphysical correlation between cause and effect caused by magic. <laughs> Shwalking along. History with Paddywhack. <laughs> History with it, more like science. Oh, with science with Patty Black. We got all the stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. Social study. Well, no, that is social yeah. studies. Carver's got history. Studies. What is Alex got? Fencing. <laughs> <laughs> Fencing with Alex. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then Death Cap is. Wait, how, what is Death Cap? Is he another? Well, like, is ignorance he like with Death Cap. Ignorance with Death Cap. Biology. He's the one that's <laughs> learning everything. <laughs> I'm the student. Yeah, you're the student. <laughs> Death, Cat's, Death Cat thinks he's the human studies teacher. Like yeah, all their he's... cultures and stuff, he understands. <laughs> and Zeroth is phys ed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, uh, uh, are you setting this guy up for an, in for a, uh, what do you call it, an interview with the dead? Uh, yes, I'm trying. There's one problem, though. One can't mm -hmm. access the main village one until they've gotten a perfy precta. For what? A what? A what? Perfy precta. It's an old form that basically says that these you foolish old people from the lower parts of town are allowed into the village. It's um. You can get it at the steward's booth. That seems asinine and stupid. It is asinine and stupid. You completely mirror my view on this thing. Stupid. <laughs> it is stupid. Oh, that's the DMs. Alright, whoops. There we go. There we go. That's not spoilers. You can see now, can see yep. as this cart is now way too small for everyone. He directs you over towards this building right here. If you want to go get yourself one of those, uh, one of the perfect Precta, they're a bit of gold and you have to look tip-top shape. If the steward doesn't like you, he's not gonna let you in. But uh, you can go apply for permits there. Oh, boy. Here we go with the permits again. It's just like the elves. The elves? Yeah. You had dealing with elves, Carl. Oh, we have a lot of stories for you. Should we get through this alive? Right now, our bigger problem is dealing with these Ken and Muin. Keep following us. <laughs> Ken and Muin. I'll have to study my history elves? books when I get home. This is a Dex Mortem. What, what kind of nonsense am I getting myself into here? It really oh, is the Kenan Muin. You're getting yourself into more than nonsense, friend. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just... the bodies that we're dragging around with us here. You need to bring this into the village? The dead guy? You would, yes. The steadings are no place for studying corpses. All right, so we got the dead guy on. You know, we're playing Weekend at Bernie's with the dead guy on the card. <laughs> yes. Okay. Put sunglasses on the car corpse. Right? Put his hat over his face so he looks a little bit just like he's sleeping. Oh yeah, my! Put the straw hat over his head. Toss right. him into the cart. Just. Uh... Yeah, we can walk the rest. Of the way there. Don't worry about it. I got him. I can. I can take him with me. You don't have to worry about the body. Just worry about getting into the village. They recognize me oh, as I'm uh, I, have much, I have a much easier way to do this. Hold up. 
pulls out bag of holding. Oh, perfect. Oh, dear. What? Uh, that's everything in that bag is going to stink to high heaven of corpses. Eh, it's it's just it's just uh, about two spears and two sets of chainmail. I was thinking I'm melting them down anyway. All right, your new, fi- your new friends confuse me for unbelief, but I believe you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. You know you're just, oh, oh, just oh, like, stuffs body into bag of holding. How heavy is this body? Uh, this is bloody hell. Um, uh, we'll say this body is muscles. Average size human guy probably is like. Uh, Let's say like has like 200 a... pounds. 200? Okay, 200 I still have another. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I still have like another one, over uh, 190. So yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Let me just toss a single body in here. Takes about <laughs> two thirds of bag of holding, or two. Not two uh, takes up uh, two fifths of the, the storage capacity. Yep. <laughs> um. How how long is it gonna be before we get to your your home? Well, my little goblin friend. I'm sorry, can you remind me your name? I know it starts with a D and an E. Uh, Death Cat. That's gonna be very easy to remember. I've some of those in my home. <laughs> okay. Um. Yes. So it's gonna be a I'll, little while. How, about how a day. long? Yes, go ahead. Okay. No, uh, I was going to uh, say, how long do we have to be in this town? A little while. I need to prepare all my things, and you need to get the perfect prep time, so I wouldn't expect that to take any less than a day. So um, I'm going to go ahead and wild shape into a, uh, let's say, squirrel, and then just, like, then uh, perch on his shoulder. Ooh. Like, I'm not going in that bag. Who would? Make see. yourself look like you're his familiar. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, I will. I have so many questions right now, but... Uh, you know, <laughs> it's just... Again, contemplating what fresh hell have I, have I gotten involved in. <laughs> just suspend disbelief. It, it, it's the best way. I can't. It's kind of my thing. I need to figure this. How can you do that? <laughs> Just pointing at the squirrel. <laughs> oh, by the way, I've got a lead for you. I what? have an idea. Let me research this. But if you were asking a place where you could be safe from Vex Mortem, there was a, a castle in Telbaris, magically protected and warded. I what will have to research called? this. I don't remember. I, it's been a long time since I've done research on this, but... Not our castle, is it? What's the name of our castle? No, again? in Main Telbaris, the, the eastern side, over the Redont. It's a place you'll be right. safe, but... Over the Redont? That's... It's, it sounds impossible, I know. There are manners. There are ways you can get across. However, it's not going to be sunshine and... Roses, I'm afraid. See, Talbaris has been afflicted with a bit of a curse. They say the sun never shines. They say it's dark always, that the moon is the only thing that rises, and that, well, ancient spirits haunt it. And it's looked over by some enormous being known as the Great Old One. I'm not sure how much of this, of this is true, but I haven't been to Maine to Morris in, as you can imagine, several hundred years. And they say that Gerard Van Seeger still lives, though I doubt that. The first vampire to ever live. He was created out of spite and out of love from his sons, but they had no idea what they were doing. I won't go into details now. 
Come meet me at my townhouse when you're ready, and we can talk. Any information you need, I will most likely be able to research for you. Okay, sure. <sighs> and as for me, I'm going to be seeing myself out now. <laughs> and he disappears. Wow. Hmm. Just disappears? Yep. Just disappears. It's like you blink and he's gone. Is the corpse with him? Uh, no, the, the corpse is in the bag of holding. We have the corpse in her bag of holding. Got it. Correct. Yep. I mean, it's, a, it's an indiscreet way to carry around a body. Yes. All right, that's good. 14 stone body. Sounds great. Okay. And then, of course, Squirrel falls from the air onto the ground. Oof. <laughs> yes. Okay. We're going to try to get our oh, way to the next Pointing at Squirrel. So, I'm, I'm well, going to some death cap sh- uh, shape because I thought we were going to, like, go somewhere important. And it's like, okay. So much for laying lower. How the fuck here. can you do that? Magic? <laughs> just her eyes just narrow. I, I, I... I'm one with nature. I just think of an animal and I become it. I don't know how to explain it. <sighs> let's let's just get those papers. So, uh-huh. now does everybody look presentable, or are we look like we're you're covered? Most clothes? of you, especially um, Zeroth, Zeroth is covered in yeah. just blood and guts. Not me, I'm clean. Not you, you're totally clean. Actually, most of you are pretty clean, but Zeroth is just covered in blood. I would assume Deathcap's also covered in uh, he's got he, a, he's he's got a, a hint here it's and there. <sighs> so, if we go before the steward looking like murder hobos, <laughs> mostly this one points yeah. up and then, like, oh wow, you're tall. <laughs> I look down and just smile. Well, I guess we could try. Um, they're not going to let us in there looking like this. That's a problem. At least not this one. I might be clean. Yeah. Especially if I, I present my papers. Right, we may be able to pass off, but the point is, is the record, it's not like you could exactly sneak him by. He's a little large. Yeah. Unless we do something like let him in by the cover of night, but I don't see a way to do that, but by the front front gates. Yeah, and bag of holdings out of it. Unfortunately, they only have so much space and only about five minutes of air. Trust me, I tested that. Oh, Extensively. No. Yeah. <laughs> I do Gosh. not want to know how. Uh, yeah, I stuck my head in one. Oh, okay, that's not that um, bad. Right. Um, right. right. And I'm, then it started suffocating. I'm gonna, like, pull on on Kyrie's pants <laughs> like um yeah, I don't okay. know if you guys are aware of this or not but I have a, a um I think I I don't know how to put it correctly but I think I have a connection to to Nightblader what what the fuck's that I, I, I immediately kneel down <laughs> what do you mean a connection to Nightbleeder? Who the fuck is Nightbleeder? Um, <laughs> we'll catch you up in a minute. I the guy that killed up. Ben Ramzik. I, 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 fire guy. Yeah, the fire Janassi. What do you mean connection? I had a little shock. It's just, I, I, it's like I can, I can feel him. And it, it just feels really bad whenever he's close by. I, I, I think it's reverse. I think he's able to find us because of this connection. I put my hand on his shoulder and I say, you have no idea how much I understand this. But I look down, this is worse than I thought. I, mm. I've just escaped him more than once, and now that we've escaped him, I don't know if you guys you don't became... kill him now, do you? 
mm-hmm. uh, the field and surrounding those folks who just attacked us. Right, right, right now I'm feeling a lot of things. I, I, I don't know if I'm confusing that for him. I'm not gonna. It, it's, it's a lot. Hmm. I look up at Alex. Did you know about this? No. There have been a lot of surprises. I think we need to have a little time to communicate. I wonder what else we don't know about one another here. I don't know anything about any of you, to be completely completely honest. It feels like I'm going to be sticking around. (sighs) We ought to probably fill you in as well. Since you seem to be quite, you and your robot friend are rather useful. Mm. Plus, I think you put yourself... You're going to be wanted posters looking for us. I think you're going to be included based upon our recent exploits. Um, if if I have an idea of Tursicon, you're part of his hunt. You're not going anywhere. Ah, crap baskets. Well, so much for, we're definitely not going to stay safe around here. Didn't take them long at all to find us. We stopped for ten minutes and we ended up meeting the Vex Mortem crowd right off the bat. So what do we do now? Do we want to try to get into the village? So we can meet and talk with Asphodos again? Or we get the hell out of here? I, I... I feel like we're on the run. We need to find some way to strategize here. Be able to fight back or do something effective. Effective. I don't know what we're doing. We're just running. We're on our back back heel. Well, we should probably stay and get a bigger cart. <laughs> yeah, Rest up for expensive. a little bit and oh, see if we can't get a, some information from that uh, dead guy. Indeed, you're right. Asphodos might know something. Of course, he certainly didn't know enough about these visitors. These people were able to find us so quickly. Very disturbing. All right. We need a plan. Can we get perfect practice? Can we get to the steward's booth and somehow get passes for... Maybe we could pretend to have... We could pull a whole Chewbacca thing and just pretend that we have, you know, our new friend... Um, Sorry. As, a, as a prisoner... Zaroth is a prisoner, perhaps, and that we're bringing him into the town. He's all covered with blood and guts. We could say that there was a brawl at the at the. Uh, but that would, would that be the stewards, or would this, is there like a sheriff around or something? Well, in there, I have a, I have a feeling. Can, is there a sheriff around here? I have a feeling that these people will know about the Chewbacca thing, considering that bugbear was pretty famous. <laughs> uh, yeah, this started in a couple of. Uh, Wait. Magi, some things or others. <laughs> hmm. well, we're not going to be able to sneak him by. I just don't know. Without being able to find a shower nearby or just to hose you guys down, we don't exactly look presentable to enter into the higher tiers of this society, I guess. That's canon now, oh, by the way. <laughs> Say again? Chuba- that's canon now, by the way. Chewbacca is Chewbacca the bugbear bug that started in a play. <laughs> <laughs> Just ready to play, yeah. <laughs> so we now have Star Wars and Dragon Ball as plays in this world. We nice. got it all. <laughs> Let's see how many others we can put in before the before this campaign's over. There you Let's go. Uh, yeah. so what do we do? Do we try to sneak the? We try to sneak extra passes. We can't. Walk. I mean, uh, I guess we just go for it. I mean. We just need someone who can actually understand the information and who can take the bag of holding in. Ah, uh, yes. You're right. You probably don't all need to go in. Maybe we can keep... You know, you're, you're, friend, you're friends with the guy. You understand what he's talking about. But of course, yeah. So I suppose what we can do is split the... If you want to split the party for now, there's is there a place where we can put our... We can send Death Cap and... Um... Mm. They're off. Zeroth, right, right. That's Captain Zeroth. Up, like, yeah. is there a place where they can sort of 
lay low while we go into the, the village. I don't imagine they're going to be able to get passage. Mm. They might. They might. If we go, if we show up with them, it's going to, it's going to actually hurt our chances of getting the paperwork because we look like we're hanging out with some seedy people. No offense. No offense. I think that tavern we just came out of might be pretty clear. Yeah, if you want, might very well be. If you want death cap myself to just lay low. Ah, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Can you hold up in one of the rooms upstairs in that the tavern? The other end, I don't imagine the. It's overall probably a good idea to keep an eye on the barkeep as well in, in those villagers. I'm sure, the mm. world's good word's going to spread. And if there's any law enforcement in this area, as you said, they did. They haven't been able to kick you out yet, but. Well, I mean, we have a di we have a day to figure this out. He said it would take a day to prep everything that he needs for whatever yeah. seance that he's doing. Ah, uh, should we look around more outside here? E. Um, I I saw water close by while my Patty was driving. Can we go there and clean up? Would you want to clean up in the cursed waters? I'm not drinking well, it's it. Only, it's only cursed if you drink it. Hmm. Can I do an arcana check to make sh to, to see what I think of that last statement? Sure. Roll arcana. It's a little unclear. Depends on the curse. This curse, you don't know the exact wording of it, so you can't tell if the poison would set in if you touched it, if it would set in only if you drank it, or if you consumed it in any way. So it's a little I difficult. Huh? Um, I mean, should I have a sample of the water? Would it be possible to test it? Yes. If you test it, you have like an alchemy lab or something. It would be perfect oh, okay. in Terrahan Asphodosis. He probably has like an alchemist station, like an alchemical area where you could uh, study these kinds of things. And it's probably where he's going to be studying the the body. All right, I, can't, I convey that Thanks. information to Death Cap and yeah. everybody to let them know that there's, it's not without risk to try to bathe in, this, in these waters. I, I would like everyone to know that I have a feature that uh, allows me to create a set of artisan's tools if I take an hour of uh, an hour to make them. Nice. Okay. <laughs> cool <island. laughs> I, and I also have greater restoration, so even if they do uh, get poisoned, I can just... I could just take them with a needle and make them better. Oh, that's perfect. Hey guys, what about what great? about? That's great, actually. So we could totally do that if you wanted to. <laughs> what, about going, what about like look at the island in the middle of the Shander's Pond? That'll be a place to hang out. If there's a boat, we can go out to that island. There seem to be several boats. You can right. Steal one. So can 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 we just go somewhere <laughs> away from people and and um. I I think I'll just go ahead and do this. Ooh. Oh yeah, just do? on the cube around you and then just flash. There we I'll go. It rain so that we can at least like rinse the blood off of us. Oh great. That works. That would actually work. So, like, you just go down the road some. Like away from civilization and then just wash us off with yeah, rain. Like there. It would be really cool. It would be really cool to just get up, go hole up on that island out there at Shander's Pond. We can swipe a boat and go out there. Do, do we happen to see anyone on the island? Uh, from Good here, question. make a perception um, check. <laughs> Here's us just plotting to steal a boat <laughs> to get to an island, so we can just so we can just stay there for a day. It's right. entirely clear. Alex, you, else. both Karu and Alex, you don't see anyone at all. No silhouettes moving at all, like anything. There's this gentle breeze in the air that carries the smell of, like, freshly baked bread from Upper Town. And it also carries from this, uh, from across Shander's Pond, the faint smell of corpses. Corpses? Oh, corpse water. Fresh corpses from across the pond. Fresh corpse from across the... Across the pond, it's seemingly on the island. It, it is very pungent and fragrant, and it reaches your nose here, and you smell like the odor of corpses. Oh, great. 
Everywhere we go, it's corpses. So it, it doesn't look like there's anybody on the island. No, at all. Probably were. Yeah, I was hoping for a nice little relaxing stay on a nice little island. Instead, we get fucking corpse smell. Um, well, at least nobody's using it. I wonder if there's any metals over there that could be used for anything. You never can trust Airbnb. <laughs> no, Air D and D. Air D and D. <laughs> I'm gonna get like a rental out on that island. Oh no, that would make sense because Airbnb is air bed and breakfast. Right. Yeah. So right. I'm making. So it would still be an air. It was so it'd be more like a bed and breakfast. Okay. Well, well corpses. I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and check out somebody's Yelp review. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's Shelp. No. Right. It has to be. It has to be one letter off. It has to be off by a letter. No. Right. It, it's random people going Yelp looking at the island. Right, right. <laughs> All right, guys. You want, you want to try to clean up just in the pond or and forget the corpse? Oh, check out the island. island now that you mentioned those corpses. I wonder if there's anything good over there. Question. See if there's there's dead, then there must be something good. And so, if nothing, and if not, well, we can still spend the day there. I'm game. At least we if we can if the corpses aren't animated and stuff. Sarah, we know we can at least. Now. Sorry, go ahead, Car. Uh. I kind of want to. See, I, right, I want to steal a boat and go to the island. Zeroth, <laughs> Vankar. Yeah, I'm just listening in and nodding along. Like, yeah, I, I'm down to go to the island. All right, cool. <laughs> I, I kind of want to go to the island, if only because we have a day to do whatever we can, and like this corpse is kind of just going to be is still going to be a little fresh. So, and he needs a day yeah. to, to to prepare his seance. So, I'm game. To steal right, a boat. Let's, let's, yeah, we can go, maybe we can clean up out there. We can explore what's going on on the island just for fun. We know we can figure out if more of these Vex Morden, Vizalier, Law, Cannon, Ween, Erkies show up. Minions. We'll be able to hear them. Minions. We'll be able to hear them coming. Right? I don't know. Yeah, like I mean, minions. if they want to get to us, they either have to drop from the air or come from the uh, come from the come from the from the from the, from the lake. So right. even right. more reason to go to that island. Let's do it's it. actually a defensible position. Yeah, I like that. And also, I can take a rest maybe and then charge back fireball back up again. No offense, by the way, on almost incinerating you, Zeroth. I didn't even feel it, and I Zeroth flexes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna this look. At, steal a boat. I'm gonna look at the rest of the group and like he's not lying. <laughs> 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 I like this. <laughs> I do too. This is great. Okay. Oh, how lucky! With <laughs> that, can we take a break? Because yeah. it's been like I was just gonna yeah. say. And as we're doing that, you, we're gonna take a break. Woo! Right. Sounds good. Yeah. Also, uh, Ravana, sorry for not. Uh, sorry. For. Oh. Yeah, we've kind of been, uh, we've been just kept talking and yeah, sorry about that. All I know is Ravana, it is good to have you back. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Hello, I'm new. Well, I got. To, am I still new? I've been around for like. You've been around for a while. Yeah. You're new. You're new to me. Yep. <laughs> Hello. Exactly. It's pretty exciting. It's I super exciting. A lot about you, Ravana, man. That's cool. <laughs> It's nice to be back, especially in a bigger group. It's cool. Wow. It, it, yeah. Uh, I'm, well, my current nickname is Kleptic Kobold. Uh, <laughs> I used to be, uh, ben Ram I used to play Ben Ramzik, but Ben Ramzik died. Also known as, uh, Grapple Guy. <laughs> yes. Captain Grappler. Yeah, that's what it was. Robot, man. I yeah. love the robot. What a yeah. great bit of fun. Yeah, that's part of the reason I uh, chose Battlesmith. Partially because this allows me to play support and as well as offense at the same time. Very cool. Zara, uh, for was... context, he was called Grappler because in the very first session, when a Wyvern attacked their caravan, uh, I jumped basically... on top of it and then it took flight and I grappled its wing. Yeah, and, and you kept grappling and... stuff successfully. It was really messed up. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where that thing <laughs> came from. All right, well, we're going to go. That remind. Sorry, that reminds me of, Rav of a story with Ravana when yeah. he got on top of the dra of the wyvern. Yup, the dragon, <laughs> the white dragon, Boone, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, Boone. All right. Well, we will be back in like 10, 15 minutes. Perfect. Yep.
then it's everyone's kind especially for, like me and uh Paddywhack. Yep. Yeah. We have no idea about any like we have no clue about y'all whatsoever. Right, right. Right. So, so it's like when we have that conversation, it's like, okay, we can actually see backstories and see why we're all joining into why we're all working with the party. Right. Whether it's like my character, he's not doing it because he wants to what do whatever like, he's not trying to help y'all he's just trying to get stronger so he can help himself and the most likely way to get stronger is to help us yeah is to go along with y'all because yeah you are fighting, you big, just fighting big yeah fighting big things is easier with the group right like is that i think it's kind of oh sorry go ahead go ahead death cap I, I was gonna say like death cap's whole reasoning is because he just to live like ever since he got thrown in the group and realizing Tersicon is is back, he's he's ripped this group out of pure survival. He he cannot survive by himself. He he sees Alex. He knows about Cairo, and as long as he's with him, he has a higher chance of survival. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Well, Patty is a victim of circumstance. <laughs> You're a bad taxi driving situation. You're. <laughs> I have an Uber driver who is a victim of circumstance, and you are going to need to pay me later. You're a taxi driver and like an Uber driver that was forced I was to, be, going like, to be a merchant. You all are taking up space. I was originally going to be a merchant, but you all are taking up space, <laughs> valuable storage space at that. So excuse me if I want to get a little bit of dough out of this. Um, nobody told you to hold the gate open. Appreciate it, but nobody told you to hold the gate open. <laughs> All right, we are now back. I'm pretty sure, Alex, are you here? No. Okay, we're not back. Yet. <laughs> Hang on, everyone. Let's let's go on a break for another 30 minutes until Alex gets back. <laughs> okay, so you guys are standing outside of the tavern. There is blood everywhere. You've just totally murdered. Well, not really murdered. I thought we came over to. Uh, oh, you did. You're right here. This we we came over to a, a uh, secluded okay. area so that way we could wash off uh, yes. Zoroth and. Saw uh, the uh, island, uh, Death Cap. island, remembered, hey, there's boats, and decided to steal a boat. Okay, so you guys are making your way yeah. over towards the boats. What time of the day is it? It's currently about noon. Oh, so it's dead, dead middle of the day. Shit. And so are there people around the docks? Actually, yes. Oh, and boy. Can we commission a boat? Can we just hire a boat to take us out here, or what? You actually only see two people around the docks. There's, uh, They both appear to be fishermen. One of them is, like, a common look, commoner-looking male, and the other is his wife. Both of them, well, they're probably, he's, they're probably husband and wife. They're wearing very similar clothing. They're both sitting very close to each other, and both just casting the line over and over and over again. They're fishing. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to fuck with them. <laughs> I, How so? People, um, do I'm I'm gonna look at the group and it's like, do we want people to know that we're going to this island or no? That's a good question. Like, I think like let's let's talk a little bit. Like, be care a little bit careful. Like, do we if we let these people know that we're gone, we've gone to the island, then. They're going to tell other people who are asking around about us that we're on the island. I mean, it wouldn't be hard to be a, to figure out if we're on the island if, I mean, there's going to be a boat gone and it's going to be by the island. That's true, so maybe it doesn't matter. All right, so I, I think uh, the disappearance of a six foot eleven Goliath is going to be a... <laughs> and then seeing the bow is going to be... Okay, maybe he's there. Alright. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, there's no way to inconspicuously go to that island, so we may as well talk to him. Oh, because I, I was going to go ahead and, and get them away from the island. Because the, these people don't look like the adventuring type and don't look strong. So um, I'm going to walk away from the group, go close to the water, wild shape into a crocodile, and bite their lines. Oh my god. Are you doing that? I, I, or are you I don't speculating? Want, I don't want anybody to know where we're at. And if they don't see the, the Goliath, then... Like, so now, the question is, is, is there alligators in this lake? Well, <laughs> they're, they're also now poisoned or cursed. So, hey, why not? What else is happening with the water? I think it's scary if there's not normally alligators in this lake. That, that is scary. You think it's scary lake. if there isn't? <laughs> yeah, a random alligator just appeared. 
Yeah, that's even funnier. What the devil? It, it, <laughs> I'm checking the druid wild shape. And they're fishing in this cursed pond. Oh, well, still the water is safe, so we can assume the fish would be safe as long as they're dried. Right. All right. Yeah, how do... Oh, we don't even know how the curse affects... Like, because it... Well, it... Actually, if they're still... If they're fishing, it could be... Uh, we can assume that it only affects humans or humanoids. How many eyes do the fish have? <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. fish in Shander's Pond. Because if, like, if it... We were already told by uh, Karhu's wizard friend that the water doesn't affect the crops, so it probably also doesn't affect the livestock. Uh, uh, Death Cat, you could also turn into a reef shark. Oh, wow. Yeah. In a <laughs> pond! <laughs> Why not? Sharks in the pond. Why not? <laughs> well, that would definitely get their attention. <laughs> so you know what? I'm I'm gonna look at the Goliath. <laughs> I want you to come out with me. We're gonna give them a show. It'll scare them, keep them away, and then I'm gonna wild shape into a bear and just like whir, so that he can like fake fight me. Okay, I like this idea. <laughs> Guys, this is going to be so badly. Let's do it. <laughs> it's gonna end. None of these people attempted to fight the Goliath. They're not adventurers. Eh. Get you right. I mean, I, I I could honestly probably walk up and just yell or roar really loud, and they'd probably run just, away. Like, do we have? Because first off, we have it, a Goliath. It means we want a boat. A Goliath who has been known to be here for a while. Why not just ask them right. first and then do your plan? Oh, and has killed I've people. Here, and those I've people... been here for been here for three days, and I've killed twice as many groups. But that's besides the point. So <laughs> if if his life is a bear and we don't see him, they can either assume one of two things: either he killed the bear, or the bear killed the Goliath. No, no, no. What we don't. We don't what need to just do that. Let's just go to the me. island. They're already going to know that we're going to be there because there's going to be a boat missing and the Goliath is missing. What if I just walk up and yell at them? I'm sure the I'm sure We're all discussing the people this. will run away. Maybe we should ask them first, then do your plan. If they, you know, don't want to, you know, at least escort us over. Okay. My question is, why are these people fishing? Are they upwind of the, this death smell? We can ask them what the death smell actually. I'm right here next to you. You don't have to call me a smell. <laughs> no, no, not. Not you, the island. The island smells like death. The necromatic smell. How about that? Oh, oh okay. Cadaverous, malodorous, cadaverous, whipperous. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead with like an accusatory finger at Alex. And I don't know what you just called me, and then look at Alex and be like, should I write that down? No, no. and I'm gonna face palm. <laughs> You beat Zeroth to it. <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm just gonna go sit underneath a tree and it's like, you could have just scared people, but no, they want a talky talk. And I'm just gonna like <laughs> begin things off of my body and eat it. Okay. I think it's more so the fact that it's not per se that we want to talk to them, it's that we don't want to have to sit and go through the fight. We're being hunted. Let's just get to the island, clear out whatever monsters are there, if there are any, and then just rest and relax until we get attacked again. No, 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 I understand that. Deathcap doesn't understand that. No, okay, yeah, I'm both... saying that to Deathcap. Oh, oh. I mean, you also have options. It doesn't have to be water-related. I will point out, there is such a thing as a giant seahorse. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, you know, I, I, I'm looking at the conjure animal thing because I'm just like, you could turn into like most of these except for like the level one or two stuff at the moment. So, well, you have options, my dude. Well, the you party's a giant frog, a giant owl, a giant well, poisonous snake. 
Yeah. Uh, not the owl. On, I'm just going to walk over to one of the free boats while this discussion's happening. I'm going to get into the free boat. Anybody who's wanted to come with me, they can. Okay, hang I'm on. I'm going with them. Hang on. I'm, I'm off, in the... What were you going to do earlier? Because you said you are going to say something. Uh, I was just gonna walk off from the group and start walking towards the walking towards the boat. Oh, so you start walking off and then Carr comes with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going with him. By the, the way, way all of this is happening. We're gonna keep moving. I'm okay. gonna grab Deathcap and drag him to the boat as well. Yeah, the, the <laughs> yeah. Wait, which dock are they on? Which dock? Which dock is it, which dock is this couple on? The couple is over here in like this small inlet. Oh wow, yeah. That we don't even need to talk to them. We assume they don't need the boat. Let's just go. Let's just take a boat and leave. Right. <laughs> we can stop us. As uh, you get closer, um, the man actually turns and he sees you, and with a wide, open mouth grin on his face, says, "Morning. Nice day for fishing, ain't it?" <laughs> Indeed it <laughs> is, my good man. Indeed it is. Morning. Nice day for fishing, fishing, ain't it? Uh oh. Uh, and then he, he swings the. Uh, okay. What? Just don't don't make too many sudden movements. Let's just sail away. <laughs> yep. I have no ship proficiency. I have land vehicle proficiency, not ship proficiency. Um, I don't think any of us have. By the way, this <laughs> is actually a small raft, not a ship. It's a small raft. Still a water vehicle. Yeah, it is still a water vehicle. And there are, like, poles that are used to push along the bed of the pond. Oh, wow, it's a really shallow pond, then. Yeah. It's basically a simple vehicle. It's a very simple vehicle. So I'll so I'll use the things to push us along the bottom of... push us along the pond. There's multiple. There might be more. Like, how, like yeah. will you use one just to push a boat, or push a raft? It seems a bit unbalanced. At least two. Yeah. I'll have Good Abel. Point. He's strong. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a metal robot, right? Yes. On a wooden raft. Oh shit, yeah. That's gonna end really well. I think you know, me I think being Abel guard the uh cart and we'll just park it like over park the cart over here, tell Abel to stay stay with the cart and protect it, and if anything tries to come um towards it, fuck him up. Uh, um, I, I might want to have an extra preface to that. They're going along the road, and they're not approaching hostilely. Have we already, like, theory. started... Add in have theory. we already started... Have we already started leaving? Like, off the, taking the raft off towards the island? We should probably go um, with groups anyways. That's up to you. Well, I was gonna... I want to ask the party if, uh... If we should just destroy the rest of the boats to stop anyone from following us. Uh, no, that's not our property. Then again, neither is this, but destruction is a little too far away from stealing. We're borrowing, we're not stealing. Yeah, you're right, we're borrowing it. For like, a day. Yeah, exactly. And then we're returning it, and we're never coming back. I mean... Can I... Okay, we might come back, but we're not coming back with the sense to borrow it. I'm gonna give the guy, like, two of the gold coins, and it's like... <laughs> Go away, please. <laughs> <laughs> please, here's some gold. Enjoy fishing tomorrow, please. <laughs> Throw money at the problem, why not? We have money, it, things go away. That That's what humans say. Oh, that's a 30-minute video. Oh, it is, <laughs> yeah. I did not watch this whole thing. <laughs> oh, I say for fishing? Yep. I, I, once you said it, I was like, oh, I know exactly what it is. <laughs> yep. I don't know this, I'm sorry. Oh, no, yeah, that's totally that, fun. That, it was a horrible, not really inside joke. <laughs> it's like a non-inside joke. It's an inside it, joke for anyone who watched the video, but since say, none yeah. of us have... Uh, no, it's just, it's, just in, it's just a character. That's just like the video where the character is in the forefront. Anyways, continue, Let's please. Sorry. Let's go. Let's the boat and go drags over Death Cap. What, can't you transform into like a fish or something? I mean, if you can transform into a squirrel, you can probably transform into a fish. Yes. Yes, I can. 
<laughs> and then instantly just like I I'm I'm just gonna become a fish and like swim away. Okay, so you Make sure you go to the island. Well no, that's exactly where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take the boat. Let's, let's borrow the boat and go, 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 go. We all get on the boat. You wave to the, the fisherman. And <laughs> <laughs> you hear as you're paddling off, morning, nice day for fishing in it one more time. And like, follow it over. <laughs> and then he just gets up and leaves. <laughs> as you start making, it's not very hard to move this thing. You get turned around a couple times, but it is a still water pond. And as you were heading over, you start to see this pond, this uh, island a little bit clear, clearer. The island at the center of Shander's Pond looks like a small, rough pillar of dark stone, capped off with a mound of grass and a single solitary tree, crooked and with an emerald canopy. A pair of small, back-to-back -back crypts are the only buildings on the island, and between the two crypts is a large plague pit, piled high with bodies, some children, men, and women. As you get closer... Oh, it's a cemetery island. Yes. As you get closer, you begin to hear the sound of a low grumbling, like a snoring wolf, which emanates from inside of the open crypt on the north side of the island. This one. There's the cart. That works. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh my god, you can. It's great. Alright. Huh? I just wondered if you could move the whole thing, but you can, so it's great. Cemetery Island. Great. Let's keep going. Okay. So, you bring the raft all the way up, and it can actually just slide slowly and very... It's just can it, You can just pull it up onto one of these rocks and then hop onto the island if you wanted to. Keep it. The wah. The wah. We left the... I tried to spell wagon, but it didn't do it all the way. <laughs> <laughs> the wah. The wah. So, you guys That's hop off of the raft. Way. What would you like to do for me? Huh. Ah. <laughs> oh, now for it. Now it's time for a handy dandy little spell I also chose to pick up as I take out a. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, wait. No, I didn't pick it up. Never mind. I only took Identify, not Detect Magic. Karu has that. Yeah, I was going to say, I think Karu has that. Uh, <laughs> I took Identify, not Detect Magic. I don't know why I thought I took Detect Magic. I have Detect Magic. You want to do this? I'll catch it, cast it Ritual. Yeah. I cast Maybe. Detect Magic, sure. First level. Detect Magic. Detect Magic. There is a faint aura, very, very faint aura of transmutation. Actually, yeah, very, very faint aura of transmutation magic coming from where the snarling is inside of this cave and inside of this ground. That's curious. What do you see? Yeah, what do we see here? It's completely dark. And as the steps head down into this crypt, there is a, almost like a gate with wrought, that's made of wrought iron that leads into the better part of the crypt. I put on my goggles. <laughs> you guys see, <laughs> you see this hulking Goliath that is Zeroth strapping on a pair of metal goggles. <laughs> Oh, I have those too! I, I lower my goggles from my forehead to my eyes. <laughs> hey, you can't see in the, the night? I cannot. I can now. I can't normally. Alright. Wait. Uh, I also have dark vision. Yeah, you don't need dark vision goggles. You just got normal no, I, know, goggles. I, was just I was just doing it because like oh, yeah, I have some too. <laughs> but yeah, no. Yeah, well, I have dark yeah, vision. You have, you have more dark. science goggles. So. It's daytime. How is it dark? We're going oh, the crypt is dark. It's in a oh, crypt. Okay. Well, I mean, you want to go in? I yes. 
I see what you're doing. I guess I, I cast the light cantrip on my staff. Oh, I think see. everyone can see in the dark now. <laughs> that's actually I true. Think. Except Car. Except Car. Car who can't see in the dark. Oh, no, that's right. Car who's the only one who can't see. Humans. So can he has humans see in the dark? No. All right, I turn on the light. I, I cast the light cantrip on my on my staff. That's going to be my next question. Begin to head down into the crypt with these guys. Is the gate unlocked? Yes, but it is old and probably very squeaky. Can't Why squeak. Like throw can't squeak. Thing is out. The gate can't squeak a lot if we move it fast. I want to kick it in. Uh, are you certain? What? Are you <laughs> sure you want to do that? Quick That's check fast. with my artificer, with, with my with my me being an artificer. Can I tell how weak the metal is? Sure, make an intelligence check. It's gonna make noise if you kick it. But make an bad. intelligence check. Door breaks open. <laughs> Twenty-three. Twenty-three. It is fairly tough, but it has withered over the years, and it could probably go down with a solid kick. It depends on how hard you kick it. We'll take a strength check. Yes, yeah, see, see him just preparing to kick, and I was like, wait, 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 maybe don't, don't do that. It's, it's, it's still strong, but it's weak enough that if you do kick it, you'll probably break it down, especially with your strength we, and stature. Do we have any idea what that might be that's coming? We just did this thing about transmutation magic. Do I have any idea what to expect is going to come out of this crypt? Good question. Make a nature check. Can, can I do the nature check? Yeah, sure. Nature well, is intelligent. Why don't you do the nature check, Death Cap? That's better than me. Oh my god. With the context of this transmutation magic, and the fact that there is a wolfish snoring coming from inside of this crypt, it's, there is a chance, possibly, that there is a sleeping werewolf in the crypt. I don't kick it down. <laughs> I don't want that thing. I need, at this point, I need everyone to make a stealth check. Oh, right. no. <laughs> to know for a fact, Zeroth has this advantage on. Wait. I'm wearing. Hold up! Wait a minute. You're wearing heavy I'm armor. I'm not wearing. Why do I have scale mail? Shit, man. What the hell? I'm supposed to have studded leather. No, well, let's go. 18. Hey. Well, you did a good job, but I didn't. You got I'm supposed to have studded leather. Give me a moment. I'm so sorry about this. I need to add studded leather to myself rather than. We're getting a, another bless if anyone wants it. Bless does not affect it affects attack rolls and saving throws. It does not affect um No, it does not take ability special... checks. That that oh. well, I hit cast or what the heck? Oh, okay, never mind. Gotcha, okay. I'm just like, oh hey, there's bless. <laughs> hey bless, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, bless. Hey. Oh <laughs> uh I forgot to mention this. My uh Zeroth would have a point of exhaustion right now because he went into a frenzied rage earlier. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I also like to mention that if you go unconscious in this game, you gain a point of exhaustion. So whenever what, you go unconscious, of, one level of exhaustion when you get back up. What uh, what do points of exhaustion do again? Um, uh, they have, like, different effects. Okay. For this one, you have disadvantage on all ability checks. So, I will try rerolling this. May, may I be may I re-roll this as I just replaced my scale mail with studded leather? I'm so sorry. No, yeah, no, sure. Karu totally fucked everything up, so that's fine. Yeah, I did. So I, I <laughs> without anything, I rolled a three. I got so I'm like, I don't have disadvantage. <laughs> Suddenly, the heavy breathing stops. Oh crap, baskets! You hear the very faint shifting of a cloak. Run right back to the boat! You run back to the boat? <laughs> yeah, she's running back to the boat. Hearing werewolf is just like, I do not, not want to be a werewolf kobold. Thank you very much. I like being able to have stuff on Let's me. get back in the boat. Okay. And also interact with silver. Silver's good too. 
What is everyone doing right now? I hear some people going back to the boat. Back to the boat. I, I'm stepping forward, kind of covering. Like, I'm getting in front, so if anyone wants to run back to the boat, I'm uh, the first one the thing will fight, so they have time to get away. Okay. Uh, Alex? I'm, I'm going to stay um, and try and essentially hide knowing... Like, hide again, knowing that it's coming out. Make a, make a stealth check. <laughs> you know, considering probably start running, realize, oh god, there's people staying. Take um, out my new shock crossbow. It probably it probably smells me or something. Are we rolling initiative? I, will, I would like everyone to roll initiative, but we're not in combat yet. Alright. I got a six! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, my initiative. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so we got a 24 from Alex. Two more, and that would have been a uh, critical <laughs> initiative. Uh, Paddywhack got a six. Good stuff. Zeroth got a turn. Ten. Haru got a lovely eight, and then Deathcap got a three. Where's Deathcap? I don't have him here. I saw four names. I was like, yeah, that's that's right. We usually have four players. We usually. Now, now we don't have four players. All right, give me a sec. We have five now. Ah, that's exactly what this thing rolled for its initiative, too. Five. I just added counter for my shot. All right, so I don't think Alex goes first, guys. I actually think Deathcap goes first. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> Alex, you're crouched up behind, like, beside the door, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. You're just waiting there? Um, yeah, I'm gonna ready my action, though. If it attacks uh, uh, Zoroth, then I'll make an attack against it. Okay, Zoroth. What are you doing? Uh, I want to... So I know it's coming up towards us. I want to use my bonus action to rage. And then I want to use my actual act. I want to use my. I, then I want to hold my action for when it gets close to me. So you have like a crossfire in front of this door. <laughs> Alex got his rapier, and <laughs> and uh, Zeroth got his axe above his head. It's like on either sides of the door. Is that what I'm hearing? No, I'm standing right in front of the right door. I'm waiting door? for it to walk out. Okay. Yeah, as soon as it comes out, I'm swinging. Yeah. So he's got his shadow looming into the crypt. Okay. Haru, you got you just reached the boat. Get the hell over here, everybody. Come on. We're gonna get turned into a werewolf. <laughs> Most everyone is saying Haru. I'm ready actioning fucking magic missile at third level. Ooh, okay. Paddywhack. Uh hey, I, I'm probably a little bit away. But then I turn back like, ah, fuck, they're, good. they're staying. <sighs> Fine. Pulls out the new shock crossbow that I have. Okay. So you load your shock crossbow. <laughs> yep, because I have a new toy to play with. All right. Those of you beh besides the door, you don't even hear it coming up. From shadow to shadow, it seems this creature walks. What you hear, Zeroth specifically, is like nails on a chalkboard if the chalkboard was made of steel. <laughs> As this thing steps into view, you see first its long, like, gangly arms ending in massive hands with claws that it's currently, like, sharpening on its thumb. At the moment, like the thumb claw, it's sharpening all the rest of its thumb, uh, all the rest of its claws on its thumb. Its long canine snout ends in fangs that are at least two inches long, and its nose sniffs. It has eyes like fire, and as it steps into view, you can see it's wearing clothes, a hood of red that goes over its shoulder like a mantle. And it appears to wear like a necklace of beads around its neck as well. 
Oh, oh Granny, what lovely teeth you have. <laughs> it doesn't wear glasses. It has a sash across its chest. And as this- No, this is Red Riding Hood. This it's is got Red the red, Riding Hood. Yeah. <laughs> the cape and the wolf. <laughs> and as it steps into view, it looks at you and it grunts and you can see tugging at the edge of its mouth instead of a smile. What type of smile? A sort of confident, oh look, a stupid person's here that I can eat smile. But it doesn't attack ah. you. It paces from left to right. I see you've solved the murders. Clever. Very clever. What murders? We were just here because we needed a place to stay. Oh, you're here? You're here, Pennywatch? Uh, I'm a little bit away, but I'm guessing, again, kind of still here and faintly. <laughs> like, half, Pennywatch halfway between Carhu and us. How far away am I? How far is that? Uh, oh, you're like... 50 feet away. Okay, good. I can still hit them with my magic missiles. Excellent. Yes, like friends. Excellent. This will be a wonderful meal. Oh, God. <laughs> He's, you see him stand under the balls of his foot, uh, on his feet. As he bounces from left to right. Claws extended. Waiting for your first move. What do you do, Zara? Uh, so I just raged, but I'm gonna scream, bring it up, and and then use Great Weapon Master and go for a strike with the uh with the Great Axe. All right, as we're doing this, Deathcap, what are you doing? You rush forward, Zara. As Deathcap, what are you doing at this moment in time? Um. Yeah, you fish. Yeah, you fish. <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm like seeing Kairu come out and talking about get to the boat, get to the boat. Um, I am going to ready a chill touch. Ready the chill touch. Got it, Alex. Zeroth just uh, barreled into this crypt, axe raised, ready to fight this thing. But he's in the crypt, the thing's not coming out of the crypt. No, I it's thought it not, came out. No, it is pacing behind the door as it saw Zeroth. It was waiting for him to attack. Shit, then, so you think from where it is? Nope. <laughs> you gotta come back just a little bit. Oh. Then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and dart around uh, Zeroth and try and stab it in the I guess anywhere. Just stab it. Full attack. 25 hits. Nice. And then... Let's see. Oh, actually, hang on. Make that attack at disadvantage. Why is it saying... Kind of... Wait. Oh, booming blade. Oh, wow. I need you to make that Wait, attack this advantage, yeah. Oh no, oh no, is uh... 14 will miss. As no. you, as you dart forwards and plunge your, your right here forwards, the wolf, the werewolf that you see now ahead of you, grins, bears his fangs, and steps out of the way inhumanly fast grabbing your arm and pushing you past it with this just a simple a simple fluid motion shoves you in deeper into the crypt as now uh, it's standing I... on either side you've got Zeroth on one side the wolf in the middle and you're on the other side yes what's up I'm gonna use my bonus action to dash and get back out to dash and get back out alright cool and, and try and go around it so I don't take an opportunity to yep. if I can do that you can certainly do that yes alright Okay, Zeroth, you're charging at this thing. Yep. Are you attacking it with an axe? Yep, All with right. the great axe. Roll and I've got quite great, great. Yeah, I'm just rolling a with regular d20. With disadvantage. Oh, I don't think it'll be mad. Mm. 
Depends on if you get a nat one or not. All right, no. No. As your your great axe cleaves downwards, but again, inhumanly fast. It just like it kind of hops backwards on the balls of its feet, and like kicks your great axe to the side, and then it just it's standing there, and it raises one of its hands and beckons to you Bruce Lee style. Well, I, since he since he uh, kicked my axe, I want to just follow the like momentum of the kick and spin the rest of the way around and go for the second attack with the axe. You do so. Roll attack. Disadvantage. Doesn't oh. matter. Not one. You get Not inspiration. One. As he ducks backwards, you you like. <laughs> I was gonna say you not one. He kicks the axe. You spin all the way around. He catches the axe on the on like the the hilt and throws it backwards. Oh. You have no negatives from this. We're not running with like ne uh, not one pen. Not ugh. we're not running with not one penalties. But that's just like a flavor thing. Is that your turn? Uh, I want to yell out. I just want to yell out to the rest of the group. This bastard's fast! As I'm like moving backwards from him, throwing my axe back. And he says, "You have no idea." Uh, Carter. Get into the light! I'm just, I, 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 I strafe to the side and get visible enough to shoot magic missiles at level three, all five of them directly at the, the wall. Nice. You don't even need get to roll attack. Into the light. Uh, roll damage. Roll damage. All right. Let's see. Um, magic missile. The bait five of all four, things that have five, IAC. Five, five, five D four plus five. Fifteen, awesome. Mm -hmm. The magic missiles strike into his shoulder, and he doesn't actually, he can't dodge this one. He tries, but they sort of loop around and stab into his gut and his and his shoulder. Get into the light! I like him. Oh, super a mage with you. Interesting. Is that your turn, Carver? Um, yeah, at this point, I'm preparing for yet another spell. I can get Howdy whack. All right, then. I actually have a spell that's perfect for this situation. He's super fast. Let's add a little fairy fire into that. Oh, interesting. All right. I cast fairy fire. Deck save? Got it. Deck save with a DC of 16. 19. Damn it. So you see her like reach into her bag of holding, pull out this small, this is a small sil a steel cylinder, throw it, and once it lands like right in front of him, like almost these little green lights start flare like flooding out of it and trying to surround him. Cool. The little green lights go forwards, and he just kind of leans forwards on it on this like on his left leg fainting, and then darts backwards as the fairy fire strikes down where his form once was, and just bursts on the stone. Is that your turn? That's my turn! I took my action to cast the fairy fire, and I'm realizing, oh, he's a lot faster than I thought he would be. The werewolf kind of leans back on his back leg, it springs forwards at Zeroth, and makes two uppercut punches to his gut. Uh, 15. Meets it, beats it. Ooh, you take nine points of actually slashing damage because he's clawing you. So I take four. Yep. Uh, does it say magical? Because these attacks count as magical. Oh, then it would be. It just says slashing, so. All right, so we'll count that as resistance. You you still take half. Okay. And then so the second one four. is a 14, so he misses you. Oh, hang on. As he, sta as he thrusts his fist forwards and punches it into your belly, you feel like this shock wave go out, go throughout you, almost like you're being, like a part of you in your soul is being pushed from your body as he uses stunning strike on you. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Seventeen. That succeeds. You are, you feel like this, as almost as if your soul has been jolted, like you, it's almost sort of as if you can't feel yourself for a moment, but then you kind of force yourself back into it with your rage, and you just don't have any focus at all, so that kind of helps you in this moment, as you're not focused on anything, just want to kill him, kill him, kill him, and that's what keeps you grounded. 
Um, he is then going to spend a key point for patient defense and dodge as a bonus action. And I think that's his turn. Dodge. Death cap. Oh, he did the first time. That's what he oh. did the first time. That's why he does advantage. I, I might just keep hucking my fairy fire grenades at him until it until I get one, because let's be honest, that's the only way we're gonna be able to hit him. <laughs> Is to neutralize his disadvantage with an advantage. That's cap. So I I I did say I'm gonna hold an action. Um Is it any way I can change what I want it to do? Sure. Yeah. Alright, um how far away is he from, from like, Kairu and I? Uh, he's 50 feet from Kairu. From you, that's up to you. All right, so I'll, I'll say I'm at least, like, five feet away from Kairu. And after seeing him get close and attack, uh, and attack Xerath, um, seeing that we just got this muscle, I'm, I'm gonna go, like, not again, thinking Ben Ramsey's stuff in my mind, as I cast Hold Person. Ooh, okay. What does this look like? Um, I I want to continue going with like that that visage that I pulled with a uh, chill touch. So hold person would be a collection of all of these skeletal hands just holding in the in place. Badass. As these skeletal hands reach towards him. He darts back once again and catches one of the skeletal hands and throws it away to the side. And then just kind of waves his hands in front of him and just turns it all to mess. He's saving throw with a 23. Oh my god. What did we just get ourselves into? Lucky rolls is what you got yourself into. This is just, that should not, that was just a really lucky roll. Anything else, Death Cap? Um. I, I don't have any bonus actions. Uh, actually, I, I'm gonna go ahead and no, I can't. I can't cast two level spells. Um, my that. I'm just gonna take the the nimble escape action, and okay. and hide somewhere else. Go off towards a small bush nearby. Make a high, make a stealth check. Eighteen beats it. Beats it. Actually, nice. Okay, Alex. Um, I'm gonna try and stab him again. Well, attack. Uh, disadvantage. Correct. One point off, dude. One. Oh, oh my god. He darts backwards and his long, like long arms, as you plunge your rapiers forward, he just jumps back and catches your arms, like your wrists with his hands and throws you up. This is one off. That sucks. Then I'm gonna use my bonus section and get back out. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> that is, that is. Lousy, I'm not even kidding. That is so alright. Oh my god. That is harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> They're off. I'm going with two attacks with the great axe again. Alright, roll attack. Disadvantage. 24. That would hit. 22. 22. Hits. Seven. Is your weapon silvered? No, I don't think so. He has resistance to non-magical, silvered, non-silvered weapons. So he takes three points. As mm. your weapon bites into his, like, his shoulder, you finally get a cut off. You feel super good. And it's like trying to, trying to break through solid steel. And then for my second attack, I want to use the uh, Great Weapon Master again. Alright. Because I can use it on e I just have to use it for one of my attacks. Absolutely. Go ahead. So. 
Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I don't even need to roll again. A negative three. Jeez. Well, I, I just ro I just rolled a flat oh, d20 to not right, count yeah, it a bonus. Yeah. yeah. Is that your turn? Yeah, uh... I'm hearing them say, get out of the light. So... Yeah, I'm gonna bolt backwards, giving him an attack of opportunity. Alright, he will take that. And he will claw you. Actually, no, as you dart backwards, he lunges his fate, his head forwards and attempts to bite you. Natural oh. one, he totally misses. He's not used to it. He's off balance and he leans forwards a bit too far and he totally misses you. I just look at I just look at him, point my grass, go, <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> and bring it up with both hands again. Nice. Please do not taunt the giant wolf man who is probably going to kill us. Haru. Fireball. Fireball, let's go. Alright, you cast fireball. Um, deck save, right? Six. He met, he totally fails. Thirty. Oh. 30, yeah. Thirty points. Nice. My last third level spell, spell slot, but you haven't rested yet. Your fireball yeah. launches forwards and erupts like right on him, and you hear like a Blow yell. Huh? What would you say? Blow him back into the crypt again. Blow him back into the crypt. Him a little too far. Hit him in the chest with it. And blow him right back into the crypt again. Small bead flies through the air, hits him in the chest, and erupts, launching him backwards into the back wall. Okay, is that your turn? That's oh, that's my turn. Hit into the light. I in shout it again. Patty whack. All right then. See a goal of this so far. Switch up my shot crossbow for my light crossbow, and I cast Branding Smite. Ooh, I like it. I like it. So what this does is the next time you hit a creature with a weapon attack before this spell ends, uh, the weapon gleams if astral radiance as you strike. So basically, I get two crossbow attacks with my extra attack. Ooh, nice. Mm-hmm. So, let's see it. They're like, this is just bolstered confidence with the fact that he's actually taking a lot now. He's actually taking some decent damage. Awesome. Roll attack. You do still have disadvantage. Alright, so first I guess that's the first one. Alright, and now I've switched over to disadvantage. 18. Hits! No, it doesn't! Fuck! He has an AC 19! Damn it! Ah. Uh... <laughs> Doesn't hit it. I forgot the stats of my own character. Damn it. All right. I was thinking nope. of the Kennedy. I, it, it's getting very close, though. It's getting like, very close. Very close. And he should be scared because these are these are arrows coated in astral light. Yeah. <laughs> as they're go as like I've just I've just attached a weird little thing to the to the end of my light crossbow, and yeah. His eyes <laughs> grow should... wide. As that is pretty <laughs> freaky. All yeah. right. The creature is going to. Move forwards. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Can I yell something on his turn? Certainly. I, I just want to yell at him. Bring it on! And just try to like tempt him to come rushing towards me. You evil creature, speak of! I will destroy you like a fly under my boot. I just flip him off. <laughs> I'll make you regret <laughs> that. He runs forwards, and he's going to make four attacks on you as he uses his one of his key points to use flurry of blows. Do you have point? Yeah. Yeah, that's what's been going on this whole time. <laughs> he bites you with a 23. That hits. As his teeth gnash into you, you feel like a surge of pain up your arm as some strange feeling comes over you. Make a constitution saving throw. Uh, Sixteen. You fight this feeling off as he bites you and then proceeds to rake his claws towards you. 15, needs to beats it. Five points of slashing yep. damage. And as five he, without, five, five without, oh, the resistance. without the resistance. Without, oh, you also have the other one too. So you take a total of four damage from those two attacks combined. And then from his, uh, using his bonus action, he he's not dodging. So no disadvantage on your next attack rolls. 10 and crit. Damn. 
crits okay. on the second one. So you take a, so we're doing a rule called crunchy crits, where you take just the roll and then add the maximum possible damage from the dice. So that applies to both the player characters and to the monsters. But when you get a critical, you're gonna do butt tons of damage, but so do they. You're taking a total of 15 points of of slashing damage, and I need you to make a I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. As he empowers his, uh, like he, can I? Sorry, go ahead. So I have, I have advantage on dex on dex saving throws against effects that I can see while not blinded, advantage. deafened, or incapacitated. Advantage. Okay. As he, like, thrusts his palm forward in a tiger paw, he pushes you oh, forwards, and you feel this power shoving you backwards as he uses his open hand technique to knock you prone. And then proceeds uh, to can I? Yep. For that critical, can I use Stone's Endurance? Yes, you certainly can. Uh, didn't you already use and it? Was, Is it a long rest? Thing? I had. I can use it three times per long rest. No way! That's awesome. Yeah, totally. And yeah, then, yeah. uh, was yeah, that right. fifteen? That fifteen was halved, right? Fifteen. Um, that was not halved. No. Okay. So it's actually only seven. And then one d twelve plus two. Yeah, you're probably not taking any damage from this. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, no damage. You just get pushed prone. And then he uses 45 feet of movement to dash out of the door. Alex, you get an opportunity attack. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, wait. What's happening? With disadvantage, or? No, no disadvantage. He did not use his bonus action to dodge. He used it to uh, flurry blows. <laughs> oh. oh. Hits. One oh. shy of a crit. Oh, no. It was a 19. Damn. Roll damage. Do you get sneak attack on this one? Can you do that with a reaction uh, attack? Does he have another enemy? Uh, no, he doesn't. Then I'm good. I can crit him. Oh, wow. It's good. And it's psychic it's damage good. because of Vincere, so he does not have resistance. I am not seeing the damage. No reason. Roll big damage. Alex just fell off the base of the earth. Uh, Alex? The suspense is killing me. Yeah, it is. Oh no. Where is he? Alex just fell off the earth. Alex just died. Where is he? You don't have the damage. It Psychic damage! No! <laughs> Alex! Okay, I'm gonna come back to you. When you roll that damage, tell me and I'll add it to it. Death cap. Uh, so, he's completely away from the group, right? Yes, he's in the light now, by the way. He's in the light. Um, he's in the light. Um, whoa! I think Alex just. I think Alex legitimately just died. His PC is. I think his PC just broke or something. I couldn't handle Fincer. Oh no! Oh, you back, Alex? Are we good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was weird. That was weird. Yeah. Roll, uh, roll so the damage. Right. It is Death Cap's turn right now. Just roll the damage. I'll add it up. Uh, damn it. That is nuts. Let's take the first. Um. Oh, he is bloodied. <laughs> As you stab forwards. He just, like, he, his ears start to bleed, but he jolts forwards, almost trips, glances over his shoulder and continues running. Deathcap, what are you doing? Uh, oh, if he continues running, then he also gets to take, uh, yeah, he takes the full blade. damage of that Booming Blade, yeah. But he takes additional oh, thunder yeah. damage from that? Yeah. yeah. 15 more? Because if he willingly moves, he takes the bonus damage from Booming Blade, oh which God. means that he 
uh, I think I rolled the, a 1 for the initial booming blade, and then it's the 14, so that would be a total of the 15. Jeez. Alex, you were and if he a menace. Yes. Getting... <laughs> yeah, you, he just did massive damage. Death Cap, what are we doing? Um, seeing yeah. that now away from the group, they yes. ran outside, still hiding, I'm going to go ahead and touch the ground, and it's like, you bastard, as I cast Spike Growth. Nice! Nice! nice. Okay. 20 foot radius around him, probably, and not trying not to hit everyone else. It, it centered on him. Okay. 54 piercing damage for every five feet it moves, and it's difficult terrain, correct? Yep. yep. And they also take 2d4 piercing damage. Wow, okay. As you touch your fingers to the ground, and, like, you feel the earth beneath you, you feel feel Mayasar's connection to you in that single moment, as in that area, you feel the spikes, even though they're invisible, just erupt underneath him, and with like a, a, a wolf-like howl and a yip, he keeps moving, but his, next time he moves, he's gonna take damage. Anything else? Um, that, that's gonna, I'm, I'm gonna remain hidden, and, and that'll be the end of my turn. Awesome. Um, Alex, top of the round. Uh, I'm gonna run up to him and stab him again. Okay. Oh yeah, because you can take the bonus action. Da oh wait, no, you can't because of the spike groves. You're gonna take damage. If it's centered on him, is it 20 feet around him, Death Cap, or 20 feet in front of him? Uh, it's 20 feet around him. Ooh, it's, okay. It's on him. Then I will switch to the uh, shock bow. Nice! Oh. You already added that as a weapon? Uh, <laughs> sort of. I'm still kind of working on some... I did. Stuff. Yeah, that's some weird stuff on D&D Beyond. I don't know how yeah, it is. Yeah, D&D... It's annoying! I tried doing that with a different item, and it's very challenging to make, like, magic item weapons. Yeah. I can't modify the range, and then I'm having some difficulty with modifying the damage dice. But yeah. I know I've done it before. So, but right now it does have the correct typing of it has lightning as the type. So, okay, roll attack. Um, so, um retcon re after I cast the spike growth, I'm oh, just I miss. I'm, I'm gonna shout ouchy boo boo. <laughs> as I'm... Code word. All right, the electric yeah. bolt zooms right past his shoulder and knock off one of the charges. So, it should now be yep. at 18. Is that your 18? turn? Okay. Uh, that is my turn. Okay. They're off. <laughs> uh, for my turn, how far away is he from me? Uh, he's currently uh, about uh, 40 feet. But However, also 20 of that you're... is difficult terrain. Oh, wait. Actually, you're raging, so you're actually resistant to piercing damage. That is true. Why? But it is still difficult terrain. Yeah. I'm going to take a. Uh... I'd say get to I'm the gonna, edge and wait for the next turn. I'm gonna take a javelin in both hands. Nice. In both hands and just. You chucking it at him? Yeah. Nice. All right, roll attack. Works too. <laughs> so first one, miss. first one misses. Second one. Hits. Twenty-one. Hits. Awesome. Roll damage. Will be halved. Wait, two damage. That one's a metal. <gasps> Wait, Spike Growth is concentration. Damn. So you you graze him. You see a drop of blood that has been nicked from his side as your javelin hits him. But he's still going. Is that your turn, Zaroth? Uh, with my movement, if I were to run, like, around the Spike Growth to cut him off, would I be able, with 40 feet of movement, would I be able to do that? Uh, the spike growth is, is a, it's like a 40 foot diameter. So if you went, if you ran 40 feet to get to the edge of it, and then, no, actually, if you ran 20 feet to the edge, and then 20 feet, you get like halfway around it. Okay, I want to do that. All right, you get halfway around it. You're making progress. You will definitely be in front of him before he is in front of you. So you will definitely be able to cut him off because he is going through a difficult terrain. Hmm. Is that your turn? And that, yeah, that ends my turn. All right. All right. Um, second level magic missile, 44 plus four. I'm just going to shoot at the thing while it's being 
Why did it face? Do you say anything as you're casting the spell? You say, well, no, I'm just firing at it. This okay. is terrifying. <laughs> oh, wrong slash. Boy. Wrong slash. Well, yeah, nice. Well, this he is getting way more hurt at this point. There are like magic dart wounds in his side. There are like cut marks all across him. He is not looking very good. He's very beyond bloody. Blood is actually dripping where, from his where, face. Where is he running toward? Who is he going toward? Toward the raft. Oh, oh. toward yep. the raft. Eh? The raft. Which means he's going towards Carhu. Yes, Carhu. Right. right. He's going right for you, actually. Okay. Well, I'm gonna... How close is the raft to me? Uh, it's right behind you, if I remember correctly. All right. I jump on the raft and push with my remaining motion. I push it out into the pond so he can't get to me so easily without, cool. you know, having to go through the water. You managed to get 10 feet away. All right. With your bonus action. All right. That's enough. Okay. Uh, Patty Lack. All right. Hmm. I can't do much, unfortunately. So I'm gonna keep up my branding spite since that's concentration, and just try shooting him. Nice. Roll attack. Twice correct. Nineteen hits. Me too. Beats it. Yes. So let me roll the second one before. Oh, it's awesome. And. Oh my god! I hit it both times. Hits. So he's taking, so he's taking both the damage from both of these as well as two branding smites. And it's a shock crossbow, so it's lightning damage. No, it's light crossbow. Oh, it's your light crossbow. Light okay. Crossbow. So he yeah. so he does have resistance to it. Well, even then, he does he have radiant resistance? Absolutely not. Does he have radiant resistance? God damn it, why are you rolling so low with two decent? <laughs> well, he's taking decent damage. He's taking great damage. That has left him very hurt as he is charging through this spike growth. You are shooting him, he is running. That is that your turn? Uh yeah, that ends my turn. So he took like uh... a lot. A lot of damage. That hurt a lot. He's got two bolts sticking into his side right now. And as those two bolts stuck into him... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. At, he took at least 20 total damage. Yeah. He grabs the bolts, rips them out of his chest, and crushes them in his fist. He's going to use his once per long rest action, wholeness of body, to regain a whopping 18 hit points. And then use the rest of his movement. He's going to use 45 feet of movement, halved to 20, to get to the very edge of the spike growth. So he's taking... He's taking four, four, five. Four. No, he's taking 8d4. Yeah, that's what I damage. said. Good, sorry. Keep rolling it. <laughs> so, Cap, roll 8d4. <laughs> he is resistant, so he takes half of that, which is 7. Damn. He's pretty much back where he was before, before he healed. Now he's at the very edge. Yeah. <laughs> and he yells out, Curse you and your foolish spells! I will kill you all! Uh, that's his turn. Death you cap. can try! I will! Do or do not! There is no try! But... Who are you, freaking Yoda? <laughs> that's Cap's Yoda. You don't have the right to do that. Right. Speaking of... How far away is he from me? Uh, from you? You said you were You said you were five feet away from Karu, then you moved another, like, ten feet away. So you're probably about, I would say, 15 feet away from him. All right, so I want to so. run. I, I want to run at least around him, so I'm behind him. And then using the inspiration, I want to go ahead and cast Stern Rip. So I'm pulling him back yes. into the... Uh, nice. uh, pulling it back into the spider. Oh, that's awesome. By the way, if you're running like this, you're going to you're gonna have to go into the spike growth. Because getting behind him, he's at the very edge. You'd have to go into the spike growth. Can you go around it? Yeah, but no. If no, you wanted to pull him back into the spike growth, you'd have to go in the spike growth. 
Well, not necessarily. If he goes around the side of it, he can pull him obliquely through part of it. There's like a cord across the circle. Okay, I'll Amazing. let you do it. I'll let you do it. Roll attack. You know what I mean by this? Yeah, you know I know what I mean. Saying? If you go to the side, you can probably yank him into like the like, radius look, I'll, area. I'll block circle. Yeah. Right, so here's the circle. Here's the... the if he's the... here and he's here, you can pull him into this area, like right here. Right, because you can do like... How much, what is the range of the thing? Uh, uh, 30 feet. It's <laughs> yeah, you can definitely do that. 40 feet. If you're in here, like, uh, what's the radius of the circle? 20 feet? 20 feet. It's a 40 yeah. foot diameter circle. So it's a 40 foot diameter circle. That's about 40 feet there. So he's likely, if he's got 30 foot range, he's likely to be able to do something like this. Yeah. Let's get over to the side and then use a 30 foot cord across Finally. that. Go ahead. Deathcap, roll attack. Yeah. Whoa. What the, what the hell? hell? You got a oh, wait. plus fifteen? Cause uh, I no no I think I think he did it a little wrong. Two d twenties. Because I use my inspiration. Oh okay. Okay, that's not how it works. That basically just gives you like an advantage, yeah. I think, or whatever. Do you have advantage on this one? Yeah. So it's... both of them were plus six. Yeah, it rolled a thirty six. <laughs> oh no no. Oh wow. So, so roll two individual ones. So they both end up being 15, plus 6 is 21. Hits! We'll take that. And so, so he takes the damage for the Thorn Whip, and then... But this is not willingly oh, moving, so he does oh, not take God. the damage again. But he will take it later. 24. How far does it pull him in? It pulls him 15 feet, if that's... How far does it pull him, actually? It pulls him in 10 feet. Okay, so he's yeah, 10 he's feet in the spike row. That's 10 feet he has to move. Like, Unless he knew he he the most powerful advantage point was the, uh, was the, uh, <laughs> cemetery, and now that he's out of it, it's just like, oh no, he's getting, he's getting fucked. But, you know. the, uh, spike growth still hits him because it says when a creature moves into or within the area, it still takes the 2 d It does hit him then. Sorry, yep, I cut so you like, off. Wow, that does hit him then. 44 damage dealt to him. That's good, because he's going to go out the short way. He's probably not going to run through the, the spikes again. He's probably going to go out the short distance out through the side of the circle. Are we back? Uh, 13. Alex. I might be coming off and on again a couple times, because there is a storm outside. Oh, I got you. Yeah. You're good. We're doing this by taking out a werewolf. My god, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You lash him and pull you in. As his feet are grated against these spikes, he howls in pain. And he is not happy with you right now. This is unfortunate. He is getting whooped. Is that your turn, Death Cap? Um, I'm, I'm going to finish my turn by using... Uh... Oh, wait. Actually, I would like to add Fury of the Small. Hell yeah! So, that damage. <laughs> so you add three damage? Let's see. Is this proficiency bonus? Yes. Okay. Hopefully I get to do another hit it on him. Yeah. <laughs> and Alex, then I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. gonna nimber escape and uh hide. Nice roll uh self. Yes, you you crouch down into the bushes, but it's most likely that he knows you because knows where you are because of his innate, like incredible sense of smell. However, he's not focused on you. Alex. Uh, I need to pull up my character sheet. I thought you vanished again. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Good. Um, is he yep. still in the spike growth? Or yeah, is he... he is. Yeah, he is. He just yes, got pulled back then I will. Okay, then I will make another attempt with the shock bow. Alright. Pull it back. Uh, boom. Uh, no, I don't think so. Ooh, unfortunate. Yeah, that is not it. Lowered again. Hello? Uh, hello. Okay. Yeah. Uh, still um, good. It's not confirming that I've used another shot, and so I'm just like, okay, what's going on here? Did I lose internet again? <laughs> you were good. Is that your turn? Uh... Yes. Okay. Mark that down. Seventeen. However, I, uh, I will move uh, just to stay uh, 
nearby him, uh, but stay outside of the spike growth. Gotcha. Just kind of somewhere that makes sense based off of the direction he's trying to move. Okay. Zeroth, you were gonna, you were like running to cut him off, correct? Yes. What are you doing? Uh, how close is he now that he got pulled? Uh, now that he got Because I was pulled, on the side of it. You were actually very close to Death Cap, and he got pulled 10 feet into the spike growth. He was at the edge. I would say he's about 10 feet away from you. 10 feet? 10 feet. Well, I'm, I'm going to run in and swing with the Great Axe twice. Take 2d4 points of piercing damage, but you have that, you, that's half because you are currently resistant to your raging. Do I roll that or, is it, or does Death Cap uh, roll that? Roll that. So he's been rolling really well on it. So. Mm. Oh. You only take one damage. Oh, right. <laughs> and, you, and you get inspiration. That's the perfect timing for that. Wait, hang on. That's a. No, it, it was I a swing for that ones. Oh, not ones on on on, on oh, D20s. He's not on My God. Uh, by the way, I have made the shot crossbow as both an item and a feat. The item can track the charges, while the feat can track the damage and attack roll. Oh, okay, awesome. That's perfect. Then. Because you cannot merge the two together into an item for some reason. That's so weird. That's just so weird. Uh. All right, Zeroth, what are you doing? I want to take uh, my first great axe. My first great axe swing. All right, I'll take. Yeah. Fourteen will miss. Um, I'll just do it again. All right. Fifteen. Bad luck. Ah. This guy's really hard yep. to hit. All right. Anything you'd like to say? Um. Actually, I want to use. I assume we're gonna chill out, chill out on the island after this. So I want to, since I've been uh, raging, I want to use my frenzied part of the rage. So your bonus action to frenzied rage. Yeah. So the next turn. Oh yeah, because next turn I'll be able to attack. Right. Then never mind. I never mind. <laughs> okay. I don't want to anymore because I don't think he'll make it till next turn. <laughs> Haru. This time I yell, catch, and I throw him <laughs> a second level chromatic orb lightning damage. When you said catch, I knew what you were gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to roll attack first. Oh, I do. Yep. Okay. It doesn't automatically hit. Right. Oh. I like to roll attack. You probably have inspiration. Damn. Damn. So the chromatic orb, he actually does catch it. And, like, <laughs> for a moment there, you <laughs> think that he actually caught it and that he took damage from it. But then he, like, kind of spins it around and redirects it up into the sky where it just bursts. Crap. I like this. The werewolf is like a freaking Dragon Ball character. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really just catching magic in his hand and yeeting it away. Garbage. Uh, Alright, my it's turn. Is that your turn, Karu? That, I mean, I pushed myself farther out into the water on oh, this right. raft. Because you could do that. Yeah. But I gotta be at least 20 feet or something out That's there. That's right. right. You're, you're, like, like, you're like 30 feet out now. No, because you had to yeah, use your yeah. bonus action to move 10 feet. All right, that, that, you'll be like 10 feet away. 20 feet. Right. He's not jumping on that raft anytime soon. Well, nope. Because he's, he's distracted, because I'm about to shoot some motherfucking crossbow shots in his... his, his <laughs> damn it. AT, uh, oh, damn it, it misses, dude. That is so... Wow. I oh, keep forgetting he's the high he, NPC. He was like, with my light crossbow, just like... Die, die, die! Getting to use one of his cool abilities. Yeah, but like, again, like, another one, right past his head. Yeah, that's it. With that 18. That 18 was so close. It gives him a haircut. It's radiant energy, which he cannot, which he doesn't resist. 
<laughs> I am his greatest threat. <laughs> <laughs> he is going to, since Theroth is right there, he's going to stop moving. Notice that he doesn't actually need to, if he stops moving, he won't be dealing with the spikes anymore. Lunge forward and make two attacks on you. 24 on the bite. Theroth. Hits. Four points of piercing damage halved, and I need a constitution saving throw from you. Fifteen. You fight off the or the not the urge. You fight off this horrible sensation in your arm again as he bites you, and then the claws. Seventeen. Hits. Nine. Uh, nine points of slashing damage, not halved. So you can have that. And then he is going to. Oh, let's see here. He has two key points left. He's going to use uh, Step of the Wind to disengage as a bonus action and then move, what, 10 feet? Yeah, he's going to move 10 feet out of the uh, the spike growth and then move 25 feet over to the raft. Which is 20 feet away. He can't jump that. Most likely. Well, get him, get him, get him. Wow, get him, get him, get him, okay. Get him. Exceptional ability. <laughs> okay, six points. He is almost mortal. He is almost mortal. Death cap. Alright, so now that he's out of the um the the spell, I'm gonna drop concentration. Okay. Okay that That's good for Zeroth. Very good for me. Very good, yeah. Um. Fuck, 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 fuck. Um. What are you doing, Deathcap? I I am thinking of. Can I assume that he knows how to swim? Yeah. Yes, you can. Okay. But he's on... Is he, like, in the water? No, he is not in the water. He is currently on land. Currently on land. Okay. Um, how much land does he have left? He is at the very edge. Like, at the very edge of the pond. All right, so I am thinking of something very tricky. I would like to use Create or Destroy Water. As, <laughs> I, I'm thinking of, of creating a, like these 10 gallons of water, pushing him back towards us. Nice. I thought you were going to make the water disappear beneath us, like, put the dive in and put his head. Like... <laughs> Wily <So>, Coyote. <laughs> you're trying I, to push him backwards? I, I want to push him backwards. I want to create like gallons of pure clean water. Like as he's getting ready to jump, I want to have it appear in front of him, push him back. What oh, is you want to hold it? Eight water. What is your spell save DC? Oh, uh, 13. He got a 12 on his strength saving throw. As your <laughs> Gallons of water pummel against him. He's rushing straight forwards, and you chuck him backwards. Uh, how far can you move the water? Do you know? It it just says I, I I'm I'm gonna post it on the chat, and I'll let you decide. It? Okay, so you just interesting. All right. Okay, so you just create water, and you push him. We'll say he goes back ten feet. 10 feet. Yeah. And he's not prone. <laughs> he's prone! Kick him while he's down! <laughs> <laughs> is that your turn, Deathcap? That, that is. Alex. 
Is he still within range of me? Now he is, because you can run up to him and shank him. Oh. And you have advantages because he's prone. Yes, you do. Oh, he's prone? Oh, okay. Then yes, I will uh, switch back to Vincere, uh and stab him. Alright. Full attack. Advantage. Oh, advantage? Oh, yeah, advantage. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. He would have. It's 23. Yes. How long is booming? Blade, how long does booming blade last? Uh, it's just a round. Right so initiate it every time. Yeah, I have to initiate it each time. Okay. So he's currently taking eight. He takes six damage, and then if he moves, uh, he takes six damage. Okay. If the target willingly moves five feet or more before the target takes, or before then. When is them? Until the start of my next turn. Okay. Okay. So he has that until the start of my next turn. If he willingly moves, which can you pretty much only happen on his turn or while enchanted. Uh, actually, does that count? Anyways, willingly moves five feet. He then takes the bonus damage, which is six. Uh, the other six, yeah. Got so it. he takes six, and then he gets another six if he willingly moves. All right. They're off. Again, well, he's down. How far is he? You have advantage. He's up. For a... 15 feet. Uh, can I see, like, how bad he's looking? Yeah. Like, how much? Okay. Oh. He's okay. really bad. So, I want to run over to him. And my first strike, I want to do an arm, unarmed strike. I just want to go for a, a head stomp. You want to stomp his head in? Well, attack. Yeah, I just want advantage. to take. I just want to take one good stomp. Okay, not that. Thank God for oh, advantage. Oh no! Okay. I'll take twenty-two. How much damage do you do with this? It's just three. How do you want to do this? Oh my oh, God! Oh, he had two oh. health. Oh my so, goodness. No, I I'm come not. sprint. I come sprinting over, and uh, I stand over him. I'm looking straight down at him. He's looking me in the eyes, and I just go, "You put up a good fight." As I raise my foot and just slam it down right in his face, crush his nose, like flat, like you're crumpling a like a, a soda can, and blood flies everywhere as you break him in. And kill him. And you guys are out of combat. Holy shit. I'm not floating on my, my rap and I say, you must really not like working with administrators. Because it would have, this was a lot harder than going to the steward's booth. Uh, in response to that, I'm going to go. Last time we had to do that, we got banished. Oh. <sighs> Work of the order, this would be a great place to rest now. You said something about murders? Yeah, what's the, <laughs> the murders? Yeah. I'm just gonna go around collecting my bolts again, with two of them having been destroyed. I now have 18 crossbow bolts. <laughs> gonna have to restock at some point. I want to check bolt. I want to check the body and then go get my two javelins. All right. Um, can you make an investigation check for me? Seventeen. Seventeen. Actually, would it be an arcana check to see what knowledge I have about werewolves? Uh, yes. But give me like two seconds. Actually, that would be a. Oh. That would be a nature check. No, oh, that's fine. Arcana, Arcana <laughs> also works. So, Zeroth, as you go over to his body and you look him over, it's very strange. He doesn't really have that much on him. There is one thing, though. He has an amulet in his pocket. And give me, like, three and a half seconds. <laughs> 3.25 seconds to find my thing. Here we go. Here it is. 
Um, here we go. Awesome. This amulet depicts two skeletal hands over an obsidian crystal ball. On the background of like black metal. I want to call over a. Oh, I have to think about who's best with like. I just want to call over one of the guys that's really good with magic. I can help you out. You are rude. Let's be honest. I'm actually. I am also Captain Arcana. <laughs> okay, so I'm calling. I'm calling over Karu, telling him to get off the boat and get over here, and right, handing it to him to check. Paddle my way back over again. Come over and do an Arcana check. Here it comes. Oh, also, do I get. Uh, both of my javelins are just one. Both of them. Both of them. They're both fine. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Karu, as you're looking over this amulet, it seems non-magical, except that when you're t- when you touch it, you feel a faint o- odor of illusion magic. Not like an odor, but you feel illusion magic wow. on it. Hmm. Oh yeah, because you still have magic up. <laughs> Interesting. I don't. I can't identify it more than that, though. Maybe I could. Not until it. it shimmers in your hand, and then completely changes, until it appears totally different, as on a black metal backdrop, a skeletal arm reaching upwards, gra- grasping the wrist of a full human arm reaching downwards. It's like they're in. They're both grasping the other's wrists. That's your dream. Oh, you mean. Oh. We recognize that sigil. Uh, make a make a religion check. Religion. This what? is That's the. Your... This is the symbol of Ferric, the unlucky one. <laughs> one of the infernal <laughs> disciples. I can remember the name of. Yeah, Ferric. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what do I know about werewolves? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is definitely not a normal werewolf. You know that most werewolves in at least this world are able to change shape at will and can do their like rabid, hungry creatures afflicted with a disease known as lycanthropy, which makes it so that they have to, they are able to transform and turn into werewolves or wolves but they can pretty much control it. This werewolf seems like a different, like a different version of that. Very, very, it's a little strange to you, honestly. It's like, he's got something more about him. And as you're looking over him, you notice these beads are very weird. They're like almost monastic in their style. And Mm. he's wearing like very light apparel, very small, clothes and stuff that you wouldn't really see on a normal werewolf. Werewolves don't wear clothes, right? So it's almost as though this werewolf lives in the skin of the hybrid rather than as a human. Anything about the lore of the Infernal Disciples? The infer- yes. <laughs> yes. History with Karu time. Yay! A thousand, <laughs> more than a thousand years ago. The Infernal Disciples descended over, descended into the prison plane known as Evexus, which is closed off by these horrifying spectral gates that none can open. Led by Veneroth, aka the Charnel Father, who is their leader, they opened these seemingly impossible gates and entered Evexus, where they went, because they, the Infernal Disciples, are like the opposite of the exalted saints. They hated the saints and their teachings and wanted to learn how to destroy them. So going into Avexus, they went to learn from Mamer, an ancient imprisoned titan from like over 1,500 years ago. Veneroth took this information and knowledge back to his disciples and taught and gave them each a different pillar of hatred and darkness. And Ferric, is one of, is one who gives like bad luck and horrible fortunes to other to others and basically causes awful mischief that can lead to death, depra- depravity, like awful awful stuff. It's like a mischief ma- maker that actually does really bad shit. And they were all given their own demiplane in Evexus. 
For instance, one of them is Talith, or Tarlith, the the brood father, the leader of the Drow, and he rules over a connected demiplane that is both connected to a Vexus and to the material plane called the Underdark. And Ferric does not have one. He's just a sad little lonely boy who gives people pain and suffering. How much of this is probably a must? We gotta have a look around this. I think there's a good reason to look around this uh, this crypt. I think you may you may find that this is actually where this person, where this non lycanthrope lived. Was it unusual that we detected transmutation magic on this? No, not at all. It's very faint on a werewolf, but because of their curse, you would detect like a tiny amount of, of transmutation magic. Okay. That just seems normal. Well, he's a werewolf, but he seems... He lived inside the, the wolf form rather than being human and changing periodically. I so... Cursed by this... Hmm. I wonder what materials... I wonder, what could I make from werewolf materials? Is hmm. it possible to curse a werewolf with a lycanthropy? Like, they, they get the curse, and then they get the curse again? No, unfortunately. And then that means that on a full moon, they turn into a man? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's unfortunate. No, werewolf. <laughs> I mean, if it was a different strain of lycanthropy, like, rather than if it was a wolf, or they, and then they were, like, and then it was a bear, maybe, but I don't know. But, th- like I said... This this one seemed to be at least choose to stay in the in the werewolf form rather than being in the human form. I mean, he's wearing clothes. That's nor normally when a werewolf transforms, their clothes kind of merge into their form. And they don't know how that is, and probably more magic. Sarah, what um, are you doing right now? Sorry, go, Deathcap, go first, then uh, Sarah. Hmm, maybe I can make a. Look at uh, Kairu and ask um, that that creature in the crypts with the long bony fingers. Do you think this is somehow related to him, or just two things? You mean needle fingers? Yeah. I think this connection may be the cousin. <laughs> but I can. Uh, do, I, do I? I mean, DM. Do I know anything more about that than what I've said? It's hard to tell. I'd like you to make me another check. Uh, um, what are you trying to discern here? I'm trying to discern the connection between Ferric, the unlucky one, slash this non lycanthrope, and Needle Fingers. Oh, no, he's, I said needle. he's very definitely a lycanthrope. Okay. Well, Needle Fingers is, to my knowledge, connected to the Clockwork Coven. And yes. I don't know why Ferric here, or this lycanthrope. I'm He's a follower of Felric or whatever this is. If there's any connection between this and Needlefingers. Um, make a religion check. I'll be shocked if I know this. Yeah, but it was different know. before. I don't know. It makes sense for me to know anything about this, actually. Yeah, actually, this is, that's pretty that's pretty accurate to what Karu would know. It's a very vague sort of thing. Like, the connections between ancient religious figures and their monsters or their like the monsters and their patrons is not something you studied too often while you were training and studying to be a wizard. So this is not really your area of expertise. Hmm. All right, hang on, everyone, hang on one second. They're off. What are you doing? Uh, so the information that he got about Farrick would be was it given to all of us? Like, did he tell us everything that he? He most likely did a big history with Karu lesson. So yeah, you probably yeah. have all of it. He's an extremely annoying dude sometimes. He just, <laughs> just spots off really long soliloquies of... So I'm going to look at Karu and say, do we keep the amulet or do we destroy it? Eh, I can melt it down. Actually, hang on. Give me like three se- No, don't give me three seconds. When you had Detection Magic up, this thing is very magical. Ah. <laughs> of like, course. Very magical. I didn't realize this until I... No, I'm not going to give you that information, but I didn't realize that until very recently. But this this thing is extremely magical, and it gives it gives off an odor of um, oh, abjuration magic slash transmutation. 
I don't want to keep this around us if it puts us at risk of turning into what he turned into. Oh, there's a simple solution for that. Holds out bag of holding. Ah, that may be a good point. (laughs) No, I think we we should look into this a bit more. Destroying rare magic items is not generally a good practice. I mean, this doesn't have a curse on it, to my knowledge. That would not, although curses are hard to detect, this is probably, it does not seem like an item that would be cursed. And lycanthropy is not administered directly through a curse, mainly through like the bite of another werewolf, unless this was a very ancient werewolf that was cursed long, long ago. Mm. Well, I would say we should hold on to it. It might be of use to us if we could find out more about it. We could ask, we could ask, you know. I mean, I can identify it later. I do have my identifier. Ah, I, I do that's have a good idea. idea. Can you do that? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. It wouldn't be hard. Especially... Can, we to, can we set up to do a, a rest here? I need yeah. to get some spell stuff back. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, while, they, while they're while they doing a identifying and that stuff, I want to go and, like, search around the crypts and stuff. Yeah, I kind of want to do that first before and, we sell down and I just start identifying a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And I want to see if someone or multiple people will go down into the crypt with me to search the crypt. And if they won't, then if no one will, then I'm just going to stay up with I'm actually everyone else. I'm quite interested. I'm quite interested in going to the crypt from which that lycanthrope came. Because I suspect we're going to find he has dwelled down there as a monastic follower of Ferric. That's my guess. If we go down there, we're going to find some of his information. I think reading whatever he's written down there. Just give me a quick moment. I'm going to pull out one of the werewolf's teeth. Okay, you yank out his okay. teeth. One of his teeth. One that yeah, has just been just smashed one, a bit. Probably, probably one yeah, of the, one, one of the few that are intact. Yeah. Probably because I could probably use this for something. Yeah. You head into the crypts. Um, Zeroth, can you make a, an investigation check for me? With advantage, because people are helping you. Me just pull up, me just grabbing random stuff is just a trend with my characters. Werewolf tooth. Sixteen it is, yeah. and a eighteen. Eighteen. Wow. Okay. Yes, you actually do find the one interesting thing besides all the burial urns and multiple wall like the crypt here has um graves inlaid in the walls. And as you're walking through these corridors that are that hold all the buried uh, dead and all of these empty burial urns, you find at the very back, you discover a small nook that has that is includes what appears to be like a bedroll, a small trunk, and a makeshift desk upon which is an open diary that has been ah. like put together using the leather of what looks like a cow. I want to grab it. I'm a great reader because I was smart on my mountain, so I want to read it. All right, you grab it. It's written in the common dialect, and as you start reading it, it is in. It starts listing things, and at the very top, it appears to list the date. The date, by the way, for all of you wondering, is the 27th of Napra or last sun. And actually, the date on this book is the 25th of Napra. And under that is written, one second, killings in the name of Mamer. It is written, it transcribes the thought process of this werewolf. As it is, it's writing down all of its thoughts. It gets crazier and crazier as it goes. In that chest, it apparently said, The book says that in the chest were several amulets of the of the infernal disciples and that its plan was to kill those of a family that which it does not disclose and then put the amulets around their necks and then written quickly and just kind of scrawled in on this day it says that there was a killing in the tavern. It shredded the person to bits, ripped them in half, and left an amulet on their person. The amulet of Fall, the Duke of Pain, 
aka an open Iron Maiden. And that was the final of the amulets that it, well, actually, no, it wasn't, not at all. It had several more to do. It, you actually, as you're looking through this chest, you see an additional three amulets. One of which depicts a skull with 13 sword blades pointing out of it, all surrounding the skull. Another, which depicts a 10-legged spider facing downwards. And then the third, a blood-red sword pushed through an, anato an anatomically correct art. Oh, wow. Good thing we stopped him. He might have... Who, who knows what he could have been doing? Yeah, I want to grab all three of the... By the way... I want to grab... Sorry, go ahead. I want to grab those amulets and take them uh, top side. You got him. And also... I, I'm, with you, I'm with you down here, so I'm looking at all this stuff as well. With oh, okay. The and um, and I, I want to know, do I know anything about this these sigils yes. and the relationship? Okay, roll, uh, roll religion three times. But oh while my. you're doing that, the ones that are missing are that he is noted down. He says, I have placed the amulets of Kassir, Lord of Deception, Curse, Prince of Demons, Chaosis, Lord of the Undead, and Shandriok, Queen of the Mutants. Haru, you recognize this first amulet with the skull with 13 sword blades pointing out of it. It is very, very common knowledge that this is Veneroth's symbol, the Charnel Father, he who opened the, the Iron Gates. Second one depicts the uh, the symbol of Tarleth, the Brood Father. The, that is the ten-legged spider. And the third depicts Gameron, Lord of Cruelty, which is the blood red sword pushing through the anatomically correct heart. Do I feel anything picking up the Gameron one? No, actually, this Gameron, this seems to be completely non magical. All right, so I was wondering, Gameron could be related to this arm issue that I have. Yes. However, this oh. is not the same sigil you found on the creature that was like exploding earlier. It, like a while ago, when you touched its symbol and it exploded, that was that of a wolf, that a wolf's head. And surrounding the head was a, a snake. I see. I was eating its tail. Oh, oh wait, the ritual. same thing that's on the ring and the necklace that Alex have? Yes. Oh. No, it, this thing was trying to... It, it, um, Different... What hang on, which necklace? One second, which necklace? Uh, second session. Oh, from yeah, the no, that, that would be the same one. Same one. Yeah, and the ring from the slot. Yep, same one. Yeah, Ben Ramsey handed that to Alex because, yeah, no, I'm not touching that. <laughs> Carl, so, continue, please. I want to ask, what's the, I mean, I, my theory is that this, is this uh, lycanthrope is a follower of Ferric or follower just the generally of Namer, and this is some kind of ritual that he's carrying out. These, these sacrifices and the placing of these amulets is meant to bring something about. As you were reading, Do I, am the, able to determine what am I able to determine what it is that he's trying to bring about via this by looking at the writings? Yes, that's what I was going to say. As you spend some time reading this book, everyone can take a short rest. If you'd like to take a long rest in a second, you can, because Carr is reading through this thing. It takes him like an hour. It's a very thick book with tons of ravings about the will of Mamer and what he wants and how he wants to destroy the world and free himself from his prison. And he, yes, as you read through this, you see that he, this person, this unnamed creature, was once kicked out of his family once he was afflicted with lycanthropy. His family, apparently, according to him, was that of House Habaden a house with no farm or renown ever since they were involved in a horrible scandal. House Habitan now takes up residence in Ravisac, abandoning their old ways. They had been treating crops and magic with magical growth sim stimulants, illegal substances that gave an unfair advantage in the grain wars. So the family was cast out. Remnants of a support for their house's formerly superb grain still reside in Taruskin, a uh, remnants of support, but most have changed sides in favor of another, of another family. He was apparently kicked out after he was afflicted with lycanthropy. His family, had been trying to shelter him for a long time and curing him. 
However, once they were booted out after their scandal, they took out their anger on him. And the remnants of their family are the ones he's trying to kill in this town. And he and you read in this book that apparently he was planning on going next to Ravisac and murdering the rest of his family for what they did to him. Oh wow, so he popped in like just in time before he could do something really bad. He almost got he got three people down and he figured at the same time, why not make my uh worship of Mamer known at the same time? And bring about so it fear and so it terror in this town. I see. So he wasn't he wasn't intent there wasn't any sort of sort of supernatural ritual that was gonna bring about another we don't want I mean, we just got through dealing with freaking Zalorazok being summoned. I don't want Mamer showing up or any of his pals. No. Mamer is may if the way that the demons and devils got out of Avexis is the tiny crack that was opened when Veneroth opened the gates. They couldn't close the door again. So that's the way demons and devils get to the material plane is through that crack. But Mamer could not possibly fit. The prison was designed so that he would be constantly like he his head would scrape the ceiling of the shat like the shadow fire realm, and he was not able to escape at all. So Mamer to summon Mamer that would take some that would, that would be like Veneroth levels of shit, and Veneroth is hard to summon as is. I see. So this see. is You're simply a revenge you. ploy. All right, cool. Revenge ploy and also a spreading of fear and terror because fuck you, assholes. Yep. That's why. All right. Mainly because about... he was shunned for being a werewolf by the few that knew. So he's trying to inflict fear and terror and also murder the rest of his family. I see. All right, what do you say long rest? Um, yeah, I mean, I might want to find out where the bodies are. And, I don't know, maybe burn them? Burn the bodies? That sounds like a good idea. What would smell less if we burn them or do the long rest first? If we burn them, it'll. <laughs> if we burn them, it's gonna be terrible. But yeah. also, I don't really trust the place we're at, and I Me don't either. want, I don't want anything else to come get us. So I kind of like to either search the other crypt first, and oh, yeah, good point. There are two. There's yeah, I'd like to search the other one first, and then either either take the long rest and shifts, or burn the bodies first. That's um, a good idea. Hey, I'll probably burn the bodies and then check out this the crypt while they're burning to save time. So I I I just got three things to go ahead and point out. Um, thing one, he sucks at preserving meat, as I'm pulling out meat from the urns trying to taste it. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does. Thing, thing yeah. two, um, didn't that little girl said that her friend was missing? Oh. Oh, oh and the smell was fresh. Uh, shit. And then thing three would be, didn't that house, what did, did that house have that name that's on that book? What? The, the rhinery. Yeah, what was the winery's name? The winery, let me just check that for you. Uh, yeah, because they're actually wondering that. What? Um, I think that was Stonefin. Let me check. Okay. Let me just give you, look, I just need to make sure. Yeah, because we passed by two houses. We passed by the winery, and then we passed by another one. The winery was the first one, correct? Yeah, this one. Then that was house... Stonefin, yes. Okay. And second one? And the second one was of House Heron Mill. All right, no. no what, and the family was kicked out, so they probably destroyed whatever house was, that they had, actually, so. Speaking of which, this this family was enormous, and their, their house was burned down up here. This is what this thing is. The ruins of their house. And it, and he notes that he had actually stashed something up in that house, some extremely powerful item of worship for Mamer, and burned the house to the ground. Yeah, let's go and just maybe we should go and destroy that. Um, well, I just I just survived a demon invasion, and I don't want to, to the risk of any more coming in. No, let's yeah. And after we do what we have to do here. Let's look for that friend 
of that little girl who may or may not have the amulet. I also have to say, I'm running low on spell slots, guys. If we run into anything close to what we just defeated. I mean, I'm good on magic batteries, but yeah, I'm definitely, I may need to make some more. I'm running low. All right, so how about we go up, take a long and, and then... And three level ones and one level two magic battery. <laughs> Are you guys taking a long rest? Let, let, let's go back outside, long rest out there. We yeah. see what would attack us if there is a threat. Yeah. Does it smell worse in the crypt or out of the crypt? Out of the crypt, because of the plague pit between oh. the two crypts. How Are we sure we don't? Not at all. They're exposed to the air. <laughs> I think we I think we cleared out the first crypt. So I think we could sleep in there. Yeah. As creepy as it sounds, but it definite it definitely would smell better. Alright, let's go in there. I mean I really need to, if I can get some spell slots back, a long rest would be great. If I could re then I don't mind. We can fight whatever we need to fight. Yeah, um I I agree. I, I can use a long rest because this meat tastes like shit. I'm gonna drag him away from the meat. Tell him you're gonna get yourself <laughs> sick. Yeah, that's not a good thing to eat. All right. so, I wouldn't eat that. I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and cast Goodberry and just like pop one in my mouth. All right. Wait, All right. how the fuck did you do that? Shrug my shoulders. I keep telling you, but you don't want to listen. <laughs> Great damage. <laughs> All right, so are we gonna do long rest? What what's the shifts? I think we should probably have uh, uh even though we're inside. I'm I'm doing pretty good, so I can take first. Okay. So who's taking first oh. shift? Uh, Patty will volunteer for first because yeah, she's still doing pretty good. Okay. And plus, it's only like one entrance, so she can literally just sit down, crossbow, sit down, like crossbow, like at the ready, and you know maybe you know do a little bit of tinkering on her legs while she on her you know prosthetic legs. Right. Well, you know, detach one, you know, do do a little bit of maintenance, that sort of thing. <laughs> also, yeah, did I mention? Yeah, I, did, I think I mentioned this, but yeah, I didn't actually mention this. Zeroth. Uh, yeah, she has prosthetic metal legs, like from like you know the knee down. <laughs> So Guys. I completely confused. They they nerfed my Goodberry spell. How do you mean? I used to get plus six to any healing effect thanks to my life domain cleric, but now I'm just getting the 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 that that for Goodberry. It's not included in my my life domain bonus. It should include. It's still healing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, uh, is it the fact it's not a cleric spell? The berry's not a cleric spell. Oh, because the um, um it's a good yeah, good berry because it would affect your cleric spells, not your druid spells. Ah, uh, that makes uh, sense. No, because I think it is affecting it because good berries only do one point. Oh. And then he's got wisdom of three, so yeah, it's was, four. Oh wow, okay. Uh, oh wow, yeah, no, actually, no, yeah. That was weird. I was like, why is there no why is there no die roll? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's not getting nerfed. Like, you, if anything, you got a buff. Yeah, so you st it's still there. You just were misreading it. Yeah. I don't know how you'd get a plus six. No, because I, I, I remember before we took the break, I was getting... um, I I was getting the... the I remember casting Goodberry and getting a plus ten because of the life cleric. No, because that makes more sense for healing word. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. But my there. vine is now at 30 feet. Like, it's not 90 feet. And I remember on the videos, Fenris would say 30, but then I would display it and it'll say 90. Or which one? What my my turn. What the hell? That's weird. That's very weird. I am checking the the book right now, so let me give me a moment. Uh, yeah, I think that was. Is, is hitting 
Long rest? Yep, Good berry of uh, one hit point. And yeah, uh, Patty's getting for a shift. Patty, Patty's taking for a shift. Because she's still like full HP. She's been crossbowing this entire time. So Patty and being a... <laughs> it is completely still and silent as you guys are long resting in the middle of the day. <laughs> After coming to this island, so you took like a raft and then just stood here. Stay, you stayed here for eight hours and rested. Uh, who are you trading the shift off to? I'll do it. Uh, thinking mm, Death Cap. He didn't take a whole lot of damage either. Actually, though, know, he didn't take any at all either. So he doesn't. So, and he's, all he needed was really his spell slots. But the Zeros protest of uh, Death Cap is awoken for the second part of the shift. By the way, uh, Paddywhack, so you are like adjusting your legs, fixing them during your. Yeah, just more basic just percussive maintenance. I'm doing percussive maintenance. I like it. Uh, just maintenance in general, getting rid of little rock bits that may have gotten into the foot, that sort of thing. Nice. Uh, so, Deathcap, what are you doing while you're taking your shift? Um, I'm gonna go oh. ahead and scuttle up this tree. Ah, oh, shit, wait. Go inside? <laughs> we're, we're on the outside or on the, on the inside? Inside. It's outside. Oh, inside? Oh, well. So you um, guys are on the inside, Deathcap. You'd be watching the the entrance. Yeah. So I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and grab like my little my staff and just patrol like a little soldier. Um, uh, <laughs> like a little like I saw humans do this once. I think this is what I have to do. That is adorable. <laughs> Damn it! You're walking the best you can to the Toy Story toy soldiers. <laughs> Your long rest passes completely uneventfully, and you guys can long rest. If you haven't already. And you awake at evening. What would you like to do from there? Well, there's still another crypt to check out. Hmm. Yep. All right. So you head over to the other crypt. It's more of the same thing. Could someone make me an investigation check? I will try oh. investigating this one. Can I do it also? Because I've been on really good investigation. Sure, why not? Oh, and Patty Wack right. apparently hasn't. Uh, oh my gosh. I finally have an inspiration point. You do. <laughs> okay, Alex. Alex, you're looking around. Wow, that was one hell of a wasted 18 because there's nothing here. Burial urns and that's about it. Except for there's like a small shrine to this one person who has died here. Except that their name ha name has been tarnished on the surface ever since, with like dead flowers around it, like garlands, and many portraits that have been like they're withered down pictures of seems to be a man, and he seems to be pretty regal. You're not entirely certain what that's about. Mm, let's get a better look at that name. I cast mending. Mending. Okay. Cool. I um, have that. You do have that. You turn, you get rid of the name. <laughs> <laughs> you mend the stone too far. Another lightning bolt? Yep, just give me like two minutes. Just give me like a minute, two minutes so we can get a name and a picture. So, can can I be on top of our um, Goliath friend and like sniff the ear for like any smell that isn't us or um, death? Sure. Uh, make a perception check. As the mending spell goes off, you read the name Taruskin Hedging. Oh, hey! Apparently the town, the, hmm, apparently the town was named after this guy. <laughs> it goes over to the picture and... Mending? Alright. Yep. Uh, 19 perception. Nothing. The smell of long, long dead corpses and rotting flesh in the urns. But, is that it? Okay. The, so did Death Cap say did Death Cap say he was trying to crawl on my back again yes, he to did. smell the air? Yes. Yep. I'm yes. Gonna he tries to Yoda people. <laughs> I'm gonna grab him by the fr like the front of the collar and like hold him out in front of me and go. Can you ask at least? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not letting him go either. I'm still holding him in the air <laughs> and waiting for a response. So what? Uh, what? You done restoring the picture? What's this guy hang look on, like? Hang on. I'll let this, let, let, let this role play play out, then I'll give you a minute. 
<laughs> so while he's still holding me, like my face is completely shut. Like I'm still trying to get like a good riff of the air. And I'm like, I'm taking advantage of the height. I'm like, <laughs> and <laughs> cut. sweat, death. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I'm i sorry. I'll ask next time. <laughs> I, I want to like raise him up as high as I can and then let go and catch him. Like, un so I'm holding him like normal grip and I want to drop and catch him with my other hand and under grip. Just like scare him. That was going to drop him all the way. Oh no, when, when you drop and then catch me, I'm going to cling on like a cat. <laughs> Amazing. That's exactly what I was And then I'm, sh then I'm just shaking going, get off. Let go. Stop it. <laughs> I thought you are going to break things. I'm, I'm just gonna go, oh, it's... <laughs> it's like... Mm. I'm just gonna give up and walk around with him clung to my arm and just like, whatever. <laughs> Alright, so what does this Taruskin guy look like? Taruskin um, hedging, as depicted on the picture by, like, the, the signature at the bottom, it is... Written Sir Taruskin Hedging, year 1125. The current year is 1421. Upon the, and it also writes underneath that in very small cursive font, um, upon the birthing of town named Taruskin. And this person looks, he's a very stern looking man who's got like a scarred bald head and like a very long curled handlebar mustache and a goatee. He looks he looks like very sharp and uh, very chiseled and he wears like very heavy plate armor almost like a knight errant tailing and he's got this upon his pauldron is a brooch which is a little strange it has like a ba a black backdrop with a not really a heart so much as a club, like you see, like on a deck of cards, mm. and that is on his on his brooch. Besides that, he's just staring up into the corner with the most stern expression on his face. I follow his eyes in the physical space outside the painting. You see a stone ceiling. Is there anything different about this? any spots in the stone ceiling? Make an investigation check. <laughs> 23. Nothing at all. Hmm. Darn. <laughs> okay. I was like, hoping for some kind of secret place that would, that would unlock a hidden passage that would take us deeper into the island. <laughs> I know you were. I know you were. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, made your way all around this crypt and it does not seem like there's anything darn but we've gotten in a, a long rest I feel like well who wants to burn some bodies <laughs> we'll have some lighter fluid no <laughs> unfortunately I do not have grease hmm but I do have a firebolt. Firebolt could help, but I don't know what's going to use the, the fuel, you know? I mean, you got to get him a, a light first. Mm. Marhu would note that Grease was one of Morty's favorite spells. He uh, would! He would! Cool. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's a great spell. Wait, can't Garhu take Grease? I don't have the spell. Oh, <laughs> short rest that you could we, we could short rest and you could take it. <laughs> we have nothing else to do, so we may as well have fun and just burn these bodies. <laughs> <laughs> um if, if it's fire that you want. Oh shit, yeah, that works. Wow, okay. Yeah, this just like just pu just pull it down into the body <laughs> and just <laughs> Giant bonfire. <laughs> Are you going to do that? Yeah, I'll I'll go ahead and do it, and then like the fire just stands in my eyes, and it's like, God. <laughs> it was, it gets, if it gets rid of the smell. Yeah. Oh, it enhances it for a little bit, and then 
once it's all gone, then it will go away. Wait, just... I remember something. Oh, wait, I need to just make a general knowledge check to see if I actually remember anything about biology. Can I make a nature check real yeah. quick? As the bonfire rises up, the fetid oh, well, stench yeah. of so I definitely remember that when things die, gases build up inside of them, which can mean... Oh, no. Boom. Exploding body pit. Back away from the pit. <laughs> the fetid stench of burning flesh rises from the corpses. Black smoke trailing into the sky and mixing with the clouds that have set over this land as rain begins to drizzle down in small, small droplets, almost too small to see. Simple veil. As you are all standing around this plague pit, you've just killed a werewolf and you've, you've rested. You've got a lot of stuff on your platter now and that is where we're going to end tonight's game. We should throw the werewolf's body into the plague pit and then set it on fire. Yeah. All right, you can write on that. You s throw the werewolf's body into the plague, pl plague pit and then set it on fire. And that is yeah, we definitely happen. don't want an undead werewolf. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just go ahead and finish by saying I like lighting things on fire. <laughs> <laughs> eh, I mean, it would be fun for a little while. Then the then the explosions will start. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys. That's cool. All right. <laughs> That we end the session? Yes, that's what I said. Yes. <laughs> end the session. That's it. Oh. Well, it's everyone, really... welcome Ravana back to the game. Yay! Woo -hoo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Awesome. Yeah, let's go. Awesome. It's been awesome. too long, man. It's been too long. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Your character is cold as hell, I must say. <laughs> I love I it. Think, I think he's colder than Ravana. He is! He is cold than And Ravana was bad. Yeah. This is, that was, like, that was awesome. <laughs> That's pretty good. In the base yeah. meaning of the word, that was awesome. Well, thank you guys for showing up for the session. I'm so, so happy to be back. It is in insane. Well, thank you again to a formerly known as Ben Ramzik and now previously, and now known as Paddywhack for running the other campaign. Really appreciate that. And now we have Deathcat back and we have, uh... We have Ravana and soon we're gonna have Verda back and it's yes. just like, yeah, we're gonna have a party of six. Um, wow. hey, Ravana, not Ravana, can you please go into your roll 20 and go over the gear yeah. icon and set your display name to your character's name? Yeah. So, yeah. Cause it's a little confusing. <laughs> Yeah. One more. I'm just not used to your uh, to your character at this moment in time. I will get used to it and I will memorize the name. However, for this point in time, I just need a little bit of help. Visual cues. Are How do I do it? Visual cues are helpful. You, you see, click the gear. Top. You go to the gear. Okay. And then you and... go to the personalization and display. Yeah, you go to gear. You go to display name, which should be like the first one. And then yeah. Oh, yeah. there we go. And you guys, okay. Yeah. So if you just set your name to that, that would be awesome. Thank you. Zora forcing. Awesome. Okay, so. Now we just need Deathcap to do it too. Yes. <laughs> That's the only one who hasn't done it yet. Because yeah. I'm. No one has the yeeted. No! <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> No, no, not, not your actual name, not, not your Discord name, your Roll20 name. Now it's just nothing. There we go. <laughs> awesome. You guys have a ton yeah. of leads. You've got the, uh, the abandoned, yep. wrecked, burned down house of House Habitan. You've got yep. to go visit What's-His-Face. Um, Terahan Aspidos and learn about what happened with these uh, these Ken and Moeen. You've got... Then, uh, oh yeah, the kings about... reviled in Elvish. That's what that means. The kings reviled. If you'd like me to spell that Wait, out for I you, I can. Oh my gosh, you chitty! <laughs> Uppies, let's go! <laughs> 
Yeah. Who are those guys again? Are those the guys that tried to attack us in the tavern? Yes, they are. Those are that is the force led by Tursicon Night Bleeder several hundred years ago when Vex Mortem was first enacted, which was right. this is the force that was made to kill adventurers. And we killed them pretty easily, and we got some good we got some good loot from it too. We did, yeah. <laughs> hey, like you gave them you're the one that gave them magic items. I did. Yeah, they were like common magic items. Th those are basically the cannon fodder. Oh yeah. Yeah they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there will be more. Yes, there oh, will yeah. be. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. More than likely, more than likely, Night Theater will have at least three generals, each one specializing in, in either sorcery, melee, or even mute, or even something else. Like honestly, if there had been even just a couple more, or they had been stronger, that would have been a nasty fight because yeah. of those magic items that they had. Yeah, I mean, I was honestly shocked. I took my first one out in just like my first round of combat. It was just like pew pew, I'm dead. I, I, nasty. The, the, scariest, the scariest thing in combat was being on on uh, um I can't say his name right now. Uh Zeroff's oh, back right. watching him just go bloody murder on everybody. Yeah. <laughs> his nickname? Murder Machine. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait for this session to explain backstory, because that's gonna be a fun one. Oh yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, the, uh, I think yeah. Yeah, because we got to be doing that here soon. Yeah, yeah I'm, looking forward, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to getting like what everybody want, all these different characters want, and what's gonna, what the hell is gonna happen? You know, right now we're kind of like you know, I was saying earlier, we're like in a crucible of like pressure from the outside world that's holding us together. But it's gonna be interesting to see how mm -hmm. this all plays out. Yep. And of course, I continue my habit of collecting random stuff because fuck it, why not? Yep, it might be interesting. So does this werewolf tooth? Yeah. No. no. The only Which thing I want to do is... you may or may not be able to transmit the curse. I I just want to survive and uppies. That's it. That's my goal in life. <laughs> survive and uppies. <laughs> survive and uppies. I think yeah, survival is a big one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so far I've been doing both successfully. <laughs> You have. And I am immune because I'm shorter than you. I'm two <laughs> foot three, but three foot. I'm shorter than you. I am immune to uppies. Okay. Well, <laughs> now Wait, that you're old, there is no uppies for you. But your uh, your your able is not immune. Ah, true. <laughs> he's and, he's a robot under my command, so no. <laughs> Only I get uppies from able. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, that's I'm, right, because he only listens to uh, yeah. Eddie's commands. I'm pretty like honestly. I'm just thinking, unless I tell him to uh, to you know follow your guys's orders, he's not going to follow your orders. He's only going to follow my orders. Right, right. I'm gonna be honest. I'm my character's the strongest in the party, and uh, I was forced into giving uppies. So <laughs> yeah. I think he can. I think he can do it to a robot too. Be careful. <laughs> I'm immune. I'm. I'm. Well, that's kind of very persuasive. Yeah, well, wait, I need to check. I throughout this entire campaign, where how many uh, sessions in? I've barely been hit. You have, and yet you have. I so think you've only hit been points. hit like what twice, three times. Aha! He is immune to being charmed. <laughs> He's immune yes. to being charmed. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he will not be immune to Death Cat's uh, charm. I have a feeling that Deathcat's going to have that as a personal mission now to try to sort of overcome that immunity it's for the robot. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you will Cat. give it to the puppies. I need to live. That means like 40 foot movement speed, so honestly, I could just ride him as a mount. I, yeah, I actually. Can't wait for more of this because it's like i'm gonna I'm a cast heat metal and then whenever abel wants to go ahead and attack it's now a fire rocket punch Ooh, that's pretty cool pretty cool the only thing is it would also hurt abel i mean i can drop concentration yeah but then you have to recast it every you know what i can mend him it's fine i can mend it's him fine it'll be fine Part of the reason i took mending was literally because i was going to be a battlesmith and i'm just like i need to be able to heal him <laughs> so yeah. 
Though, yeah. unfortunately, that mending is not going to be happening because it takes like a minute to mend. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's post battle healing for your robot. Yeah. I mean, I, I got mending too, so we can speed it up. I mean, would that work? Would multiple people be casting the same spell have the time? Uh, Fenris? In terms of getting the <laughs> finalized ver- uh, value Save. of the healing, yes. But in terms of the individual healing, no. Eh, I guess I, it would just it would be double mending. Yeah, it, you'd still take the full minute to do the mending, but it means that someone else is mending another part of your robot at the same time as you are, and so it does cut down on the full time in half. Yeah, yeah. so you, you work the bottom, I work the top. There we go. You guys have a good night now. See you next oh week. We do another session next weekend and Sunday. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited. And the party is back. And we're, we might. I don't know. We'll see. It's super exciting. I'm super, super pumped. Very cool. Have a great night, everybody. Have a great night. Yeah. Night. Night.